Papa John's Cardinal Stadium in Louisville, Kentucky, the number 12 team in the land, all set to take the field against the 17th ranked Hurricanes of Miami. They've won 13 in a row, 17 of their last 18 right here. The matchup today pits the Big East against the ACC. The Miami Hurricanes on the road against the Louisville Cardinals. Hi, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler. Welcome to what they call the Ville. These two teams have played 10 times before, and never has Louisville beaten Miami. Nine wins for the Canes and one tie. Two years ago, it was a thriller, 41-38. Miami came from behind. They scored 34 points in the second half. It got a little chippy at the end of the ball game. You think that's good? How about this year? Here come the Hurricanes. The word from the Cardinals is, don't come in our house and stomp on our bird. The last five teams that did that went home with their tails between their legs. This one got even more heated, including Paul Petrino, the offensive coordinator, right there in the thick of things. So that sets the scene. This is the biggest game in the history of this school and the biggest football game in this city. I think the Courier Journal said it best yesterday. It's sold out, it's sold out, it's sold out. You can't get in here with a police escort. That's how big the game is. I find it offensive that my two partners are not in the booth with me, but speaking of offense, they're down in the field. Let's check in with Bob Greasy. Grace? Thought I'd come down here and take a look at the number one offense in the nation, Louisville Cardinals. And the man that runs that offense is Brian Brom. He's a third year junior, second in the nation last year in pass efficiency. He's big and strong, he can do it all. But the leader of this Louisville offense stands on the sideline, head coach and offensive coordinator, Bobby Petrino. He uses the spread, he uses the West Coast, but the one thing he does is he attacks lots of points, over 40 points in 16 of the last 19 games. Miami's got a good defense. Paul McGuire, can they stop this guy? Bob, I don't think they can shut him down, but I think they can slow him down. And they got to do it with their defense and offensive lines. The first, the defensive line. What they have to do is stop the run. And I mean stop the run. The second thing, get as many three and outs as they possibly can in the game. And when they turn the ball back over to the offense, now they take over. Here's their job. They got to control the clock. They got to control the game. They got to have long drives and try to score off them. And I think if Louisville has a chance to win this football game, I think the only way they do is if they can run the football. All right, Paulie, thanks, guys. One of the hottest coaches on the left, one of the guys on the hottest seat on the right, Miami. Louisville will kick it off when we come back. drinking Guinness at a tailgating party. Yes, and I've discovered that the local custom is to wear cheese on your head. So, to fit in, I brought along some hunks of Limburger. Limburger cheese heads? Brilliant! <laughs> Brilliant! I'm not so sure we're fitting in. I smell feet. Whatever the occasion, drink responsibly. Brilliant! No, 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 no. It's too small. Autoclaustrophobia. It affects more people than you think. Oh. But there's hope on the horizon, and it's called the Nissan Versa. Versa provides relief with best-in-class rear seat leg huh? Versa keeps you going for over 400 miles on just one tank. <laughs> Versa will save the world from auto claustrophobia, one driver at a time. Ask your Nissan dealer if Versa is right for you. Post truck, you're on the car. I'm on lookout. Bird, what are you wearing? Spandex? Yeah, I got them out of my mom's drawer. It's very sexy. You think? No. Yeah. Go, 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 go. Oh. This is gonna look great in my yard. Bergwood? 
Is the strength of Allstate behind your favorite college football team? There are Louisville players who have waited two years for this rematch. Quarterback Brian Brom is one of them. He was a freshman in 02, came off the bench in the fourth quarter, but could not stop the bleeding. Senior running back Colby Smith told me he cringes when he thinks about how the Cardinals blew a 17-point halftime lead. He said, I've been so hyped this week, I have been able to sleep. There have been extra film sessions, more needling from the coaches, because despite Louisville's high-octane, top-ranked offense, they still have not beaten the top 25 powerhouse conference team in the Bobby Petrino era. Coach may have put it best. We got to win this game to get where Miami's been for an awful long time. All right, Bonnie, stay out of the fracas down there. Louisville won the toss. They'll receive Sergio Spencer. And Harry Douglas back deep, and Brian Monroe knocks it nine deep in the end zone. And so the Cardinals on offense, and here's the guy that Bonnie was just talking about, Brian Braun. Coming in, he's a star in the making. He had a great year last year before the injury. He told us this is what we're going to do on the opening drive. On the first drive, we want to score every time. Uh, we script it in a way where uh, we want to put points on the board, and we believe those plays will go for touchdowns. And, uh, we want to go out there and have a great first drive, get the momentum rolling. I like that. We're going to go get a touchdown. <laughs> First down from the 20, all three of his receivers to the near side. With Colby Smith, the single setback. And Smith will get the call. And he got about three before Miami closed the door. Louisville offensively. Colby Smith's the guy that has to take over now. We'll see a lot of George Stripling as well. And, of course, those guys are taking over for Michael Bush, the sensational running back that was lost with a broken leg. So his season's over. And the guys that have to fill the spot, not the same types of back as Michael was. Michael's 240 plus. These guys a little bit smaller. They're all purpose type backs. Spread formation here with five wide receivers on second down and seven. And here comes a blitz. Rom hangs in and lofts it. Incomplete. Boy, he took a shot. Urudia was the intended receiver. As we take a look at the city defensive lineups for the Miami Hurricanes. John Beeson, one of their top tacklers. He's the captain over there, and he's a guy you have to account for. One of the greats in a long line of great linebackers that have come out of the U. This defense has been number one in the nation, passing three of the last four years. Watch the shot Brian Brown takes on the first. He's taken a lot of hits this year, and this is what you want to do. If you can't get there and sack him, at least knock him down. Now Stripling and Smith both in there, and Smith will clear out of the backfield on third down and seven. Brown, plenty of time this time, and he's going to run for it. Get down, Brian. And he does with a first down. He's not bad at that, in fact, in the game that Bonnie talked about two years ago when he came in in relief of LaFleur's. He did a nice job scrambling around and buying himself some extra yards. Well, they talked to us the other day about this, and they said what Brian's going to do, Brom, is going to run. If Miami takes his linebackers and they, they see pass, and they fly out of the middle of the field. Brown is not a great runner, but they're going to let him run. So first down across the 30 at the 31-yard line. It's Merriweather right there. And here he comes. Look out, and down he goes. Boy, you called that, Grease. Number 19 flying out of that secondary. Randy Shannon, the defensive coordinator, is going to move him around. He's over here on the left side. Nobody picks him up. This is something new. The Cardinals haven't seen this. Throwing on first down, you've got to be aware. When you stand up there at the quarterback, you look around, you see number 19, the weak safety, up on the line of scrimmage. You, gotta, you know something's coming. Well, a nine-yard loss with the sack. That's only the third sack the Cardinals have given up so far this year. Two tight end set, and again, Brown will work from the gun. Yerudia in motion toward the ball. And hit from behind and catching his own fumble, Brian Pata knocks down Brian Brown. Well, you know what the problem is? They're doing it with four guys rushing. Now, I can understand when Merriweather came, it was a, it was a back that came in in bliss. But the last play is four guys coming downfield on these guys, and if you can't block four and you can't run the ball, which I said at the beginning of this game, you can't win it. Now they're back inside the original line of scrimmage. After having a first down out at the 31, it's back at the 18-yard line. Third and 23. Little stunt going now. They want to throw a screen, and Ron's going to just get rid of it. Now the Miami defense is just all over the receivers. They're playing tight man coverage, 
And as Paul said, they're getting some pressure with the front four guys. A flag came in about 15 seconds after the play was over. And it's way out at the 33-yard line. Might get an unsportsmanlike conduct. It's way downfield. It's 20 yards away from where Brom threw that football. Illegal receiver downfield. Well, it took a long time to develop, and those linemen came out on the left side to try to set up the screen, and they just kept motoring, I guess. Well, advantage Miami defense on the first possession of the game. Well, Brown said they're going to go down to score. Not this drive. He forgot to tell Miami. <laughs> <laughs> Miami didn't let him. Well, they went downtown on the second play of the game. And now Todd Flannery will have to punt. He hasn't been that busy of a punter so far this year, more as a place kicker. A kickoff specialist. Oh, he hit a beauty here. Bruce Johnson backpedals all the way down to the 23-yard line. And comes the other way and gets about 15 on the return. The ball is fumbled. They got it back. And the officials hit the deck just trying to get to the bottom of the pile. I think it was Will Gay down on the bottom there. Number 21, who appears to have the football. And nope, it's going to be... Miami on top of it. Well, so far, things are not going well for the home team. Louisville not doing well on their first possession, the leading scoring team in the country. And here they knock the ball loose, and they don't come up with it. Did you notice that it was all Cardinals red around there, and you never saw a Miami player get up? I don't know how they got the recovery, but I guess they did. I mean, this There's where Gay game. had it, and he lost it on the bottom of the pile. So now it's Kyle Wright, and he'll take over with the Hurricanes offense at the 36-yard line. He'll work from the gun with four wide receivers on first down. Going to throw a slip screen out there to the wide out Darnell Jenkins, and Jenkins gets nice yardage, and he's going to have a first down. Miami thinks that they've been disrespected by a lot of people this week. Kyle Wright says we're going to change that today. This has been a tradition that, is, that has been built on, um, you know, people don't give us pride and respect we've always taken it and I think this this week is is a perfect example I think people are doubting us and not giving us any respect so we're going to go out and take it we'll see how they do they come in as an underdog as the 17th ranked against number 12 and it's right to throw they're going to try a screen and that one gets blown up nice job defensively and an injured shoulder though by Abe Brown I think who made the tackle and a lot holding his right shoulder. He's the guy that made the stop. He made a great play. It was a little slip screen. They didn't block him, but then he went back and made the tackle. But it looks like either his shoulder popped out, something wrong with his shoulder. So Abe making his 22nd career starts. Senior out of Sarasota, Florida. So one of the Florida natives on this Louisville team, and they've got quite a few. Yeah, he's a three-year starter. They'll miss him if he can't play. Well, they check on Abe. Let's check City's offensive lineup, the Miami starters. And they look like this. And Anthony Walschlager was ACC Lineman of the Week. He's the center and the anchor. Greg Olson and Chris Zellner will both be in there at tight ends to start this opening drive. We get a timeout with the injury with 11.22 remaining. First quarter, Miami on the run. Too small, cars too small. Auto claustrophobia. It's taken a devastating toll. But its days are numbered thanks to the all new Nissan Versa. Versa treats small car symptoms with best in class interior space. Now, this is roomy. Versa lets you be carefree and hands free with Bluetooth technology. I like that. Versa will help you take control of auto claustrophobia today. Ask your Nissan dealer if Versa is right for you. Oh, you're so cute. I've trained for this my whole life. I cannot fail. Because I am one with a can. Dr. Pepper has given you a shot at a million dollars. But first, you've got to get past me. Log on to ESPN.com, keyword pepper. Beat me at college pick'em, and you could be passing for the million live at the Big 12 and ACC championship game Saturday, December 2nd on ABC.
stejně neumí plovat. Your risks are always evolving. Shouldn't your insurance stay in sync, travelers? Team Colors paint, you can get the official colors of your favorite team. Sir, you're all set. Whoever that may be, exclusively from Glidden and only at the Home Depot. This ESPN production is available on ABC HD, presented by Dish Network. Back in Louisville, A. Brown was taken directly to the locker room. Their senior linebacker, so Preston Smith, a junior out of Sandersville, Georgia, will come in and take his spot. Miami's got a second down and nine. Smith is lined up up here at the top. Charlie Jones, no gain. A loss of one, in fact. Earl Heyman defensively made the stop. Well, when you got a guy, as you look at the city, Louisville defensive lineups, like Elvis Doomerville in the NFL. Now, Zach Anderson's going to try to take up the slack, and he has a couple of sacks already this year. Six of Louisville's defensive starters are from the state of Florida. Back at the line of scrimmage now, third down and ten. You can only have so many on Miami's team, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Nickel defense in for the Cardinals. They're showing blitz. They're going to bring it off the corner. Right steps up and fires. And it is no catch, I believe. Neither official is going to make a word out it. They did. They, they declared he was out of bounds when he caught the ball. Take a look on the top side, and you're going to see it. And when you're coming back at the ball, Leggett, watch what he does. Ball's in his hands, and he lands out of bounds. Good call. The corner was kind of sitting there. I think the next thing they'll do is come back and run a little hitch and go or a little straight takeoff. Brian Monroe to kick. That's Patrick Carter back deep. Almost oh. got to that punt. They got him. And the bad news is they got the punter. Uh, they didn't get the ball, and they got the punter. And, and this isn't running into it either, Brad. This is roughing the kicker. And that's going to give Miami another chance. Boy, they brought it after Monroe. I mean, that took so long to get this ball off. Monroe, I, I thought they were going to stuff Personal it down his foul. throat. Roughing the passer. Number 35 to receive the team. Same thing. 15 yards to the previous spot. Automatic first down. Tom Zamorski, our referee, met roughing the kicker, not the passer. And you're going to see it. Monroe up in the air, and he's just, he Ooh. just can't do that. Ooh. That's, that's, Brandon yeah. Sharp, the safety, is the guy that undercut him. And so it's a first down because it's not running into, as Paul said, it's roughing. And that's going to give Miami. A new set of downs at the 38-yard line of Louisville. You know, this is one of those plays that turn a game. And, and I know it's early in the first quarter, but here's a, here's a chance for Louisville to get the ball back. You make a stupid penalty by roughing the kicker, and now Miami's got the ball inside the 40. It's a good time to go with the passing game right after a turnover, which is what that was. Louisville was going to get the ball, and now... They turned it back over to Miami. Lance Leggett gets the catch, pick up a bot five. Let's check the game breakdown, guys. I think Miami to win, their defense has to step up against the number one offense. And off for uh, Louisville, look for some big plays. They've already thrown the ball down the field. Aggressive defenses look for big plays. Get Miami on offense. Get Olsen, number 82, into the ball game, into this offense. They've had such great tight ends in the past, and he's a good one. He's lined up on the left side, and it's Jenkins who's the motion man. They run a little draw play to Jones. He puts his head down and powers his way down for what looks like a first down. We'll see if it's a first down after we check in and get an update on Oklahoma and Oregon. Here's Matt Weiner. Matt. Brad, here's a Taco Bell update on another one of those seven intra top 25 games. Green on black. That's what the Ducks are wearing if you're scoring at home, and the Ducks doing just that, scoring at home in a hurry. Jonathan Stewart, a minute 21 in, Oregon up 7-0. Meanwhile, Brady Quinn's first pick in 144 pass attempts, a costly one. It came back for a touchdown in South Bay. All right, Matt, keep it posted. Here, no score, but Miami driving, courtesy of a roughing the putter penalty. 
give and opening up in a hurry and all the way down to the 11-yard line is Jones. You know that Charlie Jones on that play when he ran up the middle never got touched until he hit the 11-yard line. Well, he should have scored on the play. <laughs> I think he tackled himself. It's coming right up the center. Here it is right up here. Watch the blocking inside. They just gave good... the whole side down. Now, from right there on, somebody with some speed, one of these backs from Miami should have scored, just outrun those two guys, split them. They got it down to the 11. Jones comes out. Tyrone Moss, who made his first appearance since his knee injury last year, last week, he is in there right now. And here's Moss. And Moss is heading to the end zone. Down at about the one-foot line. Grace, I'm telling you, that, that, this offensive line, they are destroying the defensive line of Louisville. Yeah. I mean, there is nobody touching these guys. When they go through the hole, I don't care who the back is, if it's, if it's Moss, if it's Jones, watch the left-hand side of this line. Well, this now guy. watch these guys block. Look at the hole on the left. I mean, there's nobody there. Farrer, number 11, gets a terrific block. And it, the guy blocking at left tackle is a true freshman Jason Fox, who is starting his third game. Three tight ends in there. Now Olsen goes over on a wing left. And here's Moss to the end zone. Touchdown, Miami. So again, the roughing, the punter penalty helped the cause, kept the drive alive. And Miami takes it down and puts it in the end zone. And the thing that would look very impressive about for Miami was as soon as, as, soon as Tyrone Moss got in there, he was running toward the goal line. Yeah. He was running downhill with some power, with some speed. He was a starter last year. He was outstanding runner, got hurt. Now they've had all these other guys that are pretty good. But the difference is when Tyrone Moss gets in. And when Miami got the ball, you said they're going to throw the ball in first down. They did that one time, and then they ran the rest of the way. 7-0 Miami. This is ESPN's presentation of college football on ABC. Too small, cars too small. Auto claustrophobia. It's taken a devastating toll. But its days are numbered thanks to the all new Nissan Versa. Versa treats small car symptoms with best in class interior space. Now, this is roomy. Versa lets you be carefree and hands free with Bluetooth technology. I like that. Versa will help you take control of auto claustrophobia today. Ask your Nissan dealer if Versa is right for you. Oh, <laughs> this is so cute. Get full from Taco Bell's value menu. I'm full! Introducing Taco Bell's half-pound value menu lineup. Now fill up on any of three hefty half-pound burritos to keep your stomach and your wallet full. Think outside the bun. Oh, I stole his password online and hello. Makeover. <laughs> I got hair extensions, plumped at the lips, and snapped the hottest headshots. Hollywood, here I come. Tell me what you think. Unbreak my heart, say you love me again Undo this hurt that you caused when you walked out the door and you walked out of my life City Identity Theft Solutions. Talk to a real person to help get your life back. Free when you get a city credit card or city bank account. The more we get together, the happier we'll be Cause your friends are my friends and my friends are your friends The more we get together, the happier we'll be Introducing the new limited edition Tony Stewart line, only by Old Spice. ESPN's College Football on ABC, brought to you by Nissan, proud presenter of the 2006 Heisman. Dr. Pepper, with 23 flavors in every Dr. Pepper, there's more to it. And Capital One, what's in your wallet? Well, Miami smiling on the sideline. They just went 64 yards in nine plays here in three minutes and 42 seconds on their opening drive as they, after a roughing the putter penalty, the second series, I should say, yeah. they took it down 64 yards and put it in the end zone. So they're off to a 7-0 advantage here. And Louisville got one first down on its opening series, and then Brian Brom was sacked twice and ended up having to punt. This kick, a line drive, and Sergio Spencer makes a diving catch in the end zone, so it's going to come out to the 20 yard line. Don't forget, coming up tonight, a resurgent Nebraska team heads to L.A. in search of an upset. They take on 
Number four, USC. Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines. Tonight, 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC. College football lives here. That ought to be good. Bobby Petrino, the head coach in his fourth season at Louisville. 31 wins, eight losses. He's never won fewer than nine games in a season. A couple of years ago, the only blemish on their record, the loss 41-38 to Miami. They went 11-1 two seasons ago. Here's George Stripling. And he's stripped to the ball. And Miami's got it. At the 20-yard line, Baratka Atkins comes up with a football. You know, sometimes when you have a big game and you have it at home, there is more pressure on the home team to succeed than there is the visiting team coming in. I think you're seeing that right now with Louisville. He I mean, just, he's just not holding on to the ball. Taraz McCray is the guy that stripped it from behind. Atkins recovers it, and now Louisville and its full stadium shocked right now by what's occurring with 748 to go in the first quarter you know when you talk to coaches Greece, like we did the last couple of days i mean they plan on everything but they don't plan on these things you got a roughing the punter that gives them the ball back and then they score now the very first play from scrimmage you fumble the football i mean these are things that, that you have to pay attention to detail and that's what petrino said to us we have to pay attention to detail on first down, it's right, and he goes to his tight end, who Paul talked about in the last series. Greg Olson, who split out as a wide receiver to the right that time, and he got about eight yards on the pickup. He should catch 50 balls today. <laughs> That's your man Olson, huh? <laughs> That's right. Oh, he's already got one. So Will Gay, and they can't afford to lose anybody over there defensively. He's their captain on the corner. Well, they already lost Abe Brown, number 43. He went inside the locker room. He was He's a and linebacker. That's, that's that whole side, as a matter of fact, Brown and Gay. So this is kind of a shocker. Earlier this week, uh, a lot of you probably heard Nate Harris, starting linebacker, who's from Miami and originally had enrolled at Miami and then go, went to a junior college before coming here. He says, you know, uh, they're not like they used to be. This isn't the same Miami team. And I don't think it was that big a deal or that much of an inflammatory comment, but it ended up all over the locker room at Miami because here's a guy from Miami, and uh, Nate was talking earlier in the week. Bobby Petrino made sure he didn't talk anymore after that. <laughs> well, if you're going to badmouth the team, you got to badmouth them after you play it. <laughs> Second down and two at the 12-yard line. Charlie Jones again, and Jones has got a first down. It's first and goal, Miami. Let's check in with Bonnie Bernstein. Bonnie? Talking to uh, John Beeson, one of Miami's linebackers, he told me that Harris's face and that quote was plastered on every single door in Miami's locker room this week. And uh, and he said, you know, I think it's kind of an oxymoron that on one hand Louisville says this is the biggest game in the team's history, and then on the other hand you got a guy say you saying we're not quite as good as we used to be. He said at the end of the day, quotes don't win games, players do. Right now Miami's winning the game here in the first quarter. They've got first and goal at the cards. Eight yard line. Here they come. And there goes Jones. And he's going to be put down very short gain, if any. There's another fumble on this play. Brandon Sharp. And Louisville saying they've got it. I don't think the officials agree, though. You know who has it? Nate Harris. Nate Harris, the guy we were just talking about. That's a nice way to set him up. It really is. Right on cue. And again, the officials have not signaled. They had a little trouble. And now they give it to him. Louisville gets it back, and it is Nate Harris. Well, that'll fire up the crowd they, and they the Cardinals. Have, they don't have that swagger. <laughs> Let's take a look. Brandon Sharp is the guy that hit him. And there's the ball over here. The ball's way over behind oh, him. The ball is definitely out before his knee hits. It's just a matter of... Who has it under that pile? There it goes. That's a good shot of it going out. They are reviewing this right now. As you see, Harris finally come out of there, but the guys upstairs are having a look. Nick Trainer is our replay official today. Every play in college football is reviewed. Sometimes the uh, replay official upstairs We'll ask for a little bit more time to look at it. Here's, here's Nate Harris, number 10. Now he's following the play. Now when the ball comes out, watch him go for the ball. He just goes down to the ground and takes the ball away. 
You know, there, we we saw a film a little while ago, Brad. There's a lot of funny things go on underneath that pump. That's right. <laughs> the guy that you think has it doesn't. You got to get like a little Jack Russell Terrier down there to try to get that football out of there. I think I agree with Grease. I think this ball was out before his knee went down. It looks to be it was out before his knee was down. And it looks as though Harris is the one that picked it up and got possession. Well, the big ovation right now as they just showed the replay on the big screen down in the uh, left end zone and that's why the fans are reacting but that's the guy that really matters and the guy that's up here next to us Nick Trainer. that's Tom Zamorski from the ACC speaking of the ACC got a good one on ESPN tonight the Bowden Bowl number eight Tommy Bowden in Clemson will take on daddy Bobby Bowden and the Florida State Seminoles college football primetime on ESPN tonight also available in high definition on ESPN HD Call your cable operator or satellite provider today. College football lives here. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. I know where the boys and I will be tonight. We have a spot picked out. Mr. McGuire has a table Video reserved. Call on the field as ruled. First down, Louisville. Bobby Bowden does not chew gum. He beats it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's something to watch tonight. It's one of those did you knows. <laughs> yeah. He does. He beats up the gum. He doesn't chew it. Well, this Bobby, Bobby Petrino's team's got the ball back. The bad news is they're inside their own 10-yard line, but it's a heck of a lot better than what it could have been. We've barely played a half, I mean a half of a quarter. We've had two fumbles go the other way and a, and a, a punter get roughed. Oh, man. On the ground, a yard, maybe two for Colby Smith. Let's take a look at Louisville and their impact players. Now we talked about Nate Harris. Nate's right on cue. And... Mario Urudia is their big play wide receiver. He's 6'6", 228. He'll come into play. Keep an eye on number seven. Exactly. Not in there right now. Yeah, he's averaging 22 yards per catch for his career. So the fullback, Brock Mullen in there in front of Colby Smith. They just want to power it out of here and get themselves a little room. Play action. Ron, deep middle. Got his man on the fly. All the way to the 45-yard line to Harry Douglas. Well, Harry Douglas was out here one-on-one, -on -one and they read it. He was on Randy Phillips, number six. Harry Douglas is 85. And when they read this one man-to-man -man coverage, watch it. You're not going to see any help at all for Phillips. Douglas goes down and just runs a deep post. And look at he has, there is no help. You're a quarterback. You love that. There was not, there was 10 guys up to stop the run, and Phillips had coverage all over the field. First down at the 44. There's some big play opportunities here both ways. Colby Smith goes out as a wide out to the right side. They're going to try to swing it out to Stripling. Stripling scored on a play like this last week. He's got great speed out there in the corner, and he's into Miami territory. And he's down inside the 35-yard line. And you know, about a minute and a half ago, this crowd was sitting on its hands. They were thinking it's going to be 14 to nothing. And now the Cardinals have got them eating pizza out of their hands right now. <laughs> That's good. That turnover by Miami down inside the 20-yard line just, just turned the whole momentum thing around. It's just exactly what you said. It got Louisville back in this game, and now they've got a drive going. They'll bring three wide outs to the near side on first down. At the 36-yard line, Brian Brom in the gun. He'll go with a silent count, although he's yelling to his offensive lineman right now, the protection, because here come the Canes. He wants to throw. He hangs in and does and completes it inside the 30. Harry Douglas again. Kenny Phillips made the stop. Let's get another update. Check in in New York. Here's Matt. All right, Brad, for the second straight week, BC goes to double overtime, this time against BYU. And this is how the game ended. Jamie Silva picks off John Beck, initially ruled incomplete. They called it an interception on review. Michigan and Notre Dame now tied up at seven. Both quarterbacks have thrown costly INTs. Well, Boston College isn't coming up short on plays like oh, everybody's complaining oh, about. Yeah. Of course, they have to play an extra half an hour. <laughs> on the ground, Smith almost bounced it out of there. Got a couple. You know, Brad, when you look at this Miami defense, and you know they're a number seven in defense in the NCAA, but when you watch these defensive linemen, I'm not talking about the linebackers, I'm talking about the linemen. They get to the ball in a hurry. When you see Louisville try to run, you're going to see three linemen, not linebackers, linemen going at the ball. 
They're going to be trying to plug holes right now because there's two tight ends, the fullback and Colby Smith, all 220 of them. Third down in the yard. They fake it to him. Brom might want it all coming back the other way, and he does. Got his man open. It's the tight end, Bardridge, and he somersaults down to a first and goal. That was one of those trick rooney plays. I like it. Brunich is on the right-hand side of this offense, and he just blocks, fake blocks, comes back underneath, and nobody covered him. He just sneaks over the tight end here. Everything, the flow goes one way, and the tight end just sneaks. He blocks, he falls down, and he comes across. Doesn't that have the offensive genius, if you will, of the Petrino boys written oh, yeah. all over it? Oh, yeah. First and goal. They've got all the play you want, and they've got them at their fingertips, and they can get them called when they want. Miami's going to take a timeout. They're trying to slow down Louisville from even in the game. We'll see if that happens when we come back. Woo! Woo! See, kids? Isn't this better than flying? Yeah. Look, vagabonds. Couldn't you use your credit card miles, huh? Yeah, they blacked us out. You should switch to Capital One. What well, smells like old cheese? Oh, that's just Earl. Oh, it's just Earl, honey. Switch to Capital One's new No Hassle Rewards. Now with no blackout dates, no earn caps, and no miles expiration. This is our stop. You want to hit the ground rolling? Okay. Ooh, what's in your wallet? So I get football 24-7 with Dish Network. 24-7. Come on, man. You got to feel it. I feel it. No. You have got to feel it. All right. You're getting games every night of the week. Okay. About half the price of digital cable. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, wait a minute. Let's get the lawnmower. Get football 24-7 and games every night of the week. Just $24.99 a month for 10 months. Dish Network. Better TV for all. Introducing the rebirth of cool. Gatorade Rain. Start crisp, finish clean. Stay cool in the heat. Gatorade Rain. In only five days, Thursdays will make you smile. I lost my panties last night. A new season. A new night. Mama. The season premiere of Grey's Anatomy. This Thursday at 9, 8 central, only on ABC. Watching ESPN College Football on ABC. Ryan Brom couldn't be much better than he was on that drive so far, Bob. Four of four, 85 yards. And I, you know, they got a good play to go down in here. They've worked on this. We saw them the last couple of days working on their inside the 20, inside the 10, goal line passing and running. They bring in an extra lineman, an extra tight end. And Colby Smith. On first and goal from the three, puts his head down and burrows his way down just outside the one. John Beeson, the linebacker, made the stop with help from his friends. It'll be second down and goal. What I like about down here, and I love what Louisville's doing, you're down at the four-yard line. It's almost the three-yard line. you got a big offensive line, and the closest way to get to that end zone is straight ahead, and that's exactly what they're going to do. Just pound it at him. It's a good down to throw on, too, Paul. It's a good play action down. You don't want to wait till third. Second and goal. There's the play fake and the bootleg. Brom to the end zone. Overshot a wide open fullback, Brock Bolin. Oh, and Brian wants that one back. He couldn't see him for a while because there was a defender and an offensive guy in between him. Watch here. He's, there's going to go one receiver short, one receiver long. And when he gets out there, he can't see him when he's open. See, Brock Bolin, if he was 6'3", he's waving his hands back there on the <laughs> see, top of the L. Right there, he can't see very well. And there he is, wide open. Now it's third and goal. You got one defensive back covering two people? I don't think so. Now it's Colby Smith, right side. And Miami's too fast for that. They drop him back at the five-yard line. See, I like the first play when I said they went straight ahead. Don't try to go wide on Miami. They're too fast. 
Well, that was just good defense. Miami is strong up the middle, and they've got good speed. That's why they've been one of the top defenses in the nation for the last five, six, seven years. So the end of the quarter will have to wait for what appears to be a field goal attempt to start the second. We played 15 minutes of fiery start to the game. Miami with the early lead. They fumbled it back, and now the Cards trailing at home, 7 nothing at the end of one. Today's singular All-American flashback, University of Pittsburgh running back Tony Dorsett. This two-time All-American led the nation in rushing in 1976. He would win the Heisman Trophy, leading the Panthers to a perfect 12-0 season and a national championship. Dorsett also became the first player in NCAA Division I-A history to rush for over 6,000 yards. Text VOTE to 87654 now on your singular wireless phone for a chance at a trip to the national championship game. More bars in more places. That's what people have come to expect from Singular. And now they can expect even more. Testing from the leading independent research company proves that Singular's all-over network has the fewest dropped calls of any wireless network. The fewest dropped calls. Proof that we mean what we say. Raising the bar. So reach for the ultimate bomb, replenishing aftershave bomb with Care Protec soothes and repairs the damage from shaving. Only from Nivea for men. Cardinals live here and it looks like they're going to try a field goal which will be a disappointing end to an impressive drive. This guy Art Carmody has hit 16 of his last 17 field goals and he'll try this one from 22 yards away. The kick on the way and it's good and Louisville gets points but guys they would have rather had a touchdown there after a good looking drive. Time now to ask the big question who am I? I'm the only player from Louisville ever inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I know how to pass. You might notice the high tops there and the motion of the throwing motion, but you might not recognize as a defensive back, old number 16, picking off a pass there, going the other way. Johnny Unitas, Johnny U. Great quarterback who passed away recently, and uh, he's got his own statue here at Louisville Stadium. Guys. Miami looked like it was going to be 14 to nothing, or at least 10 to nothing. Nate Harris, the guy that we highlighted, kind of saved the day, and that was a good-looking offensive drive for Louisville. It was. I think both sides have come out nervous. Uh, yeah. Louisville especially dropping the ball a couple times and then roughing the punter. Miami showed their nervousness, too. That was a mistake, but i tell you one thing. What we talked about at the beginning of this game. If Louisville cannot run the ball, they cannot win this football game. They've got to put a drive together where they can keep the ball on the ground. That's where Michael Bush would help the cause, but, of course, he's out of the lineup, and uh, with the broken leg, he's here at the game. And he's got a good seat, but he's got a long rehab. Boy, Johnny Unitas had great speed, didn't he? He really did. I liked him playing defensive back. That was, that was good. <laughs> Going to fool me on that one. Todd Flannery will tee it up. This is the 20... Second kickoff for Todd Flannery this year. That's how many points Louisville's put on the board. He's their punter, but he's a much busier kickoff specialist. 
Bruce Johnson and Andrew Johnson are back deep for the Canes. And this one, I don't think, is going to be returnable at six yards deep. Andrew Johnson will take the knee. Now we talked about Johnny Unitas. And there's his statue outside the Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. And the football museum filled with Johnny Unitas memorabilia. And of course, number 16 here, number 19 <laughs> yeah. with the Colts. And a lot of people say, well, why would he change from number 16 to number 19? He got cut by his hometown Pittsburgh Steelers. They get rid of him. The Baltimore Colts pick him up, say, here you go, kid, you skinny little runt from Louisville. Put on number 19. He never said, I want a different number. He just wore it. He wasn't a Hall of Famer when he went in <laughs> and asked for a jersey, was no, he? No, he wasn't. <laughs> Abe Brown is back on the defensive lineup. Number 43. That's good to see. That is good to see. Kane start from their own 20. Javaris James, the freshman in the backfield. Kyle Wright back to throw. Kyle's going to air it out long, and he's got a man wide open. Oh, what a catch inside the 30 to Darnell Jenkins. That's about as far as you can lay one out there, and he made a beautiful grab. Grace, I'm going to tell you what, and I know you're sitting there watching it. You talk about time to throw a football. Kyle Wright goes back. He has time to step up and then launch the ball. I mean, it was unbelievable the time he had. Well, there he is, that little stop and go. The corner sat. We mentioned it earlier. These corners like to sit, jump on the outside. I said there would be big plays both ways. We've already seen it. 51 yards for Darnell Jenkins, a career-long catch, and it's a first down at the 29-yard line of Miami. Now they go on the ground, and they go to Javaris James, and he's got a nice tough run, picked up about five. Boy, Darnell Jenkins, a senior out of Miami. Watch him lay out for this ball. Well, I thought for an instant that Wright had overthrown him. But that's, that's it. Just make sure of the catch. Don't take a chance on dropping the ball by trying to run into the end zone. Make sure of the catch first. You can't overthrow speed, Grace. You just can't overthrow it. I couldn't overthrow many of them. <laughs> well, no, you, you, your, your, your streak patterns are like eight, nine yards. Okay. <laughs> At the 25. The give for about three. To Javaris James, impact players for Miami. We happen to pick this young guy out, even though he's not a starter. Javaris James, Edgerin's cousin, and he's had a great start to his young career. And Brandon Merriweather, well, we've already seen what he can do defensively. Number five goes out. And they bring Charlie Jones back in. Big third down here for both teams. Third and three. Right, quick drop, quick throw, and a drop pass by Olsen. It would have been a first down. Let's check in and get an update. Here's Matt. Hi, Brad. Time for a singular All-American Player of the Week update. Drew Tate going to come from behind victory for the Hawkeyes to win the Cy Hawk Trophy. Three touchdowns on the day, 270 yards. Passing. Brad, you can cast yours by texting BOAT to 87654 on your singular wireless phone. I'll do that at halftime, Matt. I'm a little busy. <laughs> John Petty, a 40 yard field goal attempt. Got it up and hit the pipe. It's no good. So Louisville saw the long pass to Jenkins, then they stiffened defensively, and the Canes come away empty. Good game going on in the Bill. 7-3, Miami in front. Every time I see her passing by, all I do is hang my head and cry. The totally new Jeep Compass. With 30 miles per gallon on the highway, it's freedom in a whole new dimension. It sure looked good on paper. Who's going to help you make sure it looks good on stage?
This is not what smart travelers do. But this is, go to thrifty.com, compare our cars, compare our rates. You'll always find our absolute lowest rates at thrifty.com. We guarantee it. Thrifty.com. Book smart. Wrangler five-star premium denim jeans. Guess who just got there today? Built comfortable. Built strong. Built right. Wrangler five-star premium denim jeans. Wrangler real comfortable jeans. Television's hottest sensation, Dancing with the Stars, live ABC Tuesday. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC. Did you guys watch Dancing with the Stars the other night? I sure did. It was Emmett getting into it oh, or what? Oh, is he good Woo. or what? If you guys haven't checked Emmett Smith on that show, check it out. We already get Paul McGuire on that oh, show. Oh, God, we already had Jerry Springer. Leave yeah. it alone. I was washing my car. <laughs> First down, Louisville after the missed field goal by Petty. Brian Brown, play action. Might want a big one right here. Flags are down. We're going to have a holding call. More than likely is Harry Douglas has another catch. Boy, Harry's been finding some little spots back there in the Miami secondary, but it's all coming back anyway. Tom Zamorski is our referee. Tom, what do you got? Holding. 63 offense, 10 yards to the previous spot, first down. Danny Barlow. Barlow out of Tallahassee, Florida with the holding call. Let's check in with Bonnie. Harry Douglas had two huge catches on Louisville's last scoring drive. This is the first year as a starter, and knowing that coming in, Harry spent a lot of time in the offseason, he told me, working on his blocking and route running because it was really important to him that his teammates were able to trust him. Now, as, as for this week in particular, he said he's worked extra hard because, you know what, today just happens to be his 22nd birthday, and the last thing he wants on his 22nd birthday is a loss to Miami. Boy, That's good one. Shocker. That would be. The birthday boy out of Jonesboro, Georgia. First and 20 after the holding call. On the ground, a stripling. Stripling's got an opening. He's got great speed. He couldn't quite break away from John Beeson, or he might have been off for more than the 10 yards he got there. Hey, Brad, you, were, you, you, you read something about Beeson. You're going to see him, number two, is going to come up and make the tackle. Uh, he is the linebacker. He's on the right of your screen. Watch this. He's going to make get off the block and get back to the outside to make the tackle right here. I mean, that just shows great speed. He said, what did he say in the paper, in a clip? He said, I had a baseball bat. I'll hit you in the back of the head. If you want to see me coming, I'll smack you in the mouth with it. <laughs> That's a linebacker mentality. <laughs> I love him. Second down at 10 now. They got back to the original line of scrimmage. Brom down the middle, completes it. And it's Barnage's just tight end. I think forward progress probably is going to get him about a yard and a half short of the first down. So we'll have a third and short after we ask you the Aflac trivia question for the week. What former NFL player came in second in the Red Mile Harness Race in Lexington in 1987? Now, this, this is tough. This is a tough one. you got to think this over. We're going to give you a little extra time probably. You'd, you'd have to... Uh... You'd have to know your horse race. <laughs> yeah, you'd have to know that and a lot, and a lot more. You should know your yeah. horse racing if yeah. you're in this town. The Twin Spires are just around a corner from us here. Look at all these guys the scrimmage for Miami. Third and no. two, they and had, nothing no. doing. They had ten guys at the line of scrimmage. <laughs> Tackle made by everybody. Yeah, and a loss on the play. <laughs> Randy, <laughs> Randy Shannon, the defensive coordinator, has been known. He says we're going to stop the run. If if Louisville is running and passing, look at all these guys. If, we, if Lua can, can run and pass on us at will, we're beaten. we got to stop the run and then force him to throw. Great penetration. Tavares Gooden was really the first guy, 52, although he was not on the bottom of the pile. He's the one that forced things. So Louisville's got a punt. Nice kick again by Flannery. And again, Bruce Johnson's got to back up to the 15, almost to the 13. Now trying to come the other way. And he got about 11 on the return. Good-looking kick, though. Preston Smith made the stop on the special teams. So it stays 7-3. 9.38 remaining in the first half. Miami on the road, leading 12th-ranked Louisville, 7-3.
This is not good. What if I get hurt and can't work? Wait, I have Aflac. They give me cash to help pay for groceries, the car, even the cable bill. Lucky me. Aflac. Ask about it at work. Aflac! The last sound you hear before you step on the field. Click, clack! Totally new Jeep Compass with fold flat passenger seats and a removable load floor. There's no end to the cool stuff you can take along for the ride. Jeep Compass, it's freedom in a whole new dimension. ESPN's College Football on ABC, brought to you by the totally new Jeep Compass, freedom in a whole new dimension. Under Armour, the advantage is undeniable. IBM, what makes you special? And Midas, for mechanics known for their work and their word. Trust the Midas touch. Last time the Canes had the ball, Kyle Wright hooked up. With Darnell Jenkins on a long bomb, 51 yards, but then John Petty missed a 40-yard field goal. So they're still at 7-3. to three. This time they'll work just inside their own 24-yard line. Right. This time in the pocket and flushed out of it. And Kyle gets down, flags down. Ball is out again. No, he's down. Don't worry about that. But the flag is back in the backfield. Chris Zelder is the guy who ended up covering the ball, and it is a holding call. Oh, there's a takedown right there. Looks like Walschlager, the center. See, he wasn't hit when he was going down, but once he was on the ground, he was hit, and then the ball came out. 78 offense. 10 yards, the previous spot. Repeat first down. So, the ACC lineman of the week last week and the senior center out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Anthony Walschlager with the holding call. It's 7 to 3. Number 17 Miami leading number 12 Louisville at Louisville in front of a packed house at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. A sellout over 42,000 on hand and one of the hottest tickets this town has seen in sports in a long long time. First and 20 now. Back at the 14. Right flushed again. Look out, Kyle from behind, and he got down at the 15-yard line, a gain of about a yard. Bonnie? Brad, you had mentioned how many Florida players are on Louisville's team, 21 to be exact, and that probably stems from the experience Bobby Petrino had when he was coaching for the Jacksonville Jaguars back in the mid-'90s. He said, I watch my kids play Pop Warner. They would practice Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, and then have a team dinner on Friday so they could watch film. So I figured if they take football seriously in Pop Warner, they're sure as heck going to take it seriously when they get older. Well, you know, it's family night around here on Thursday. You know what the Petrino boys do on Thursday night? They get the family, and then they go home, and they watch the Thursday night game on ESPN. <laughs> That's a family outing. There you go. Second down, 19. Right. This time he has time. Deep ball again. Out there and completes it. Sam Shields, the freshman. And he's all the way down to the 36-yard line. There's 48 more yards through the air. There you are right here. He's just going to go straight down the field. Shields is a true freshman with speed. Down the field, beats Russell, number 13. Ball's a little bit underthrown. He keeps his, keeps his eyes on it and makes a nice play. You know, Russell never saw the ball. He has his back to the ball. And Shields just waited and waited and waited. Went up at the perfect time to make the catch. Now, they've had long passes, and they can't end up, the, they can't finish off the drive. And that was on a second and 19. They pick up 48s. 
Charlie Jones now, and whistles will blow this one dead. Flag down, 7.49 remaining in the half. So we have a penalty marred second quarter so far. For the snap, false start, 64 offense. Five-yard penalty, remains first down. And that'll back it out to about the 41-yard line. That's Jake's take a look at our ESPNU All-State standings review. Ohio State, a winner today. They had, I think it's over. They had a slow start against Cincinnati. Florida, of course, has a big date with Tennessee tonight. Florida State playing in the Bowden Bowl against Clemson. Georgia, the last I saw, was uh, clobbering UAB. Michigan and Notre Dame playing, and, of course, Louisville, number 12. And the favorite over Miami. The last five times that's happened, Miami's won all five games. Jones looking for a place to run and can't. Back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. Nate Harris again involved on the tackle. Well, I'll tell you, Miami has been able to throw the ball down the field, and what's happening now with Louisville on their defense, they're, sticking, they're putting eight guys on the line of scrimmage, and they're saying, okay, even though you've thrown a couple deep balls on us, we want you to throw the ball. We are not going to allow you to run like they did in the first period. Let's see what the Kings come up with back at their 42 now. Second down and long. Nate Harris trying to get the crowd fired up, and his defense riled up as well. Three wide outs for Kyle Wright. They show blitz. Harris does, and he'll bring it. Wright in trouble, and Harris got him. No, it wasn't Harris, but they got to him. It was Peanut Whitehead. Antoine Whitehead, one of the top recruits here in Louisville, and he's got a sack. Here's another true freshman. He's number eight, and he's playing defensive end. And they're just turning it loose. They're not, you know, they're not holding back. They're putting seven guys on the line of scrimmage, and they're bringing five. So they've backed it up all the way to the 48-yard line. Louisville blitzes about two-thirds of the time, sends five or six defensive players. So you've got to protect, and if you can, there's some opportunities downfield to hit some big plays. Now they'll go to the shotgun right on a third and 21. Low snap, Kyle handles it. Now the pressure comes again. Throws on the run, overshot his intended receiver, and it's incomplete. Yeah, they got right a little, little, uh, little flattered, right, flustered right now. A little flustered, then a couple of sacks, a couple of pressures. Let's check in with Matt with an update before our punt. All right, Brad, Penn State humbled by Notre Dame in South Bend last week and struggling so far against Youngstown State up 3-0. Meanwhile, Michigan leads 20-7. Mike Hart scored by us, Darius Walker. Fumble, Michigan 14 points off two Notre Dame turnovers. Wow. Punt coming from Brian Monroe. And Louisville's going to let it go, and it gets in the end zone. And it'll come out to the 20-yard line for the Cardinals with five minutes and 42 seconds remaining. So both teams have had some decent drives going. Brian Brom earlier had a four for four, 85 yard march. They had to settle for three. I think he's thinking more touchdown when we come back. Legendary Cummins Turbo Diesel. You can do it all. Do I know you from somewhere? Right now, well-qualified buyers can get 0% financing for 72 months on 2006 Ram 1500 Quad Cab. The birth of the next generation of online investing. Now E-Trade technology gives you the power to easily manage cash, research, allocate, invest, analyze, plan, and borrow to make every dollar as productive as possible. Be leader of the pack. Who's counting on your brakes today? Your brakes are too important to trust to just anyone. That's why you should come to Midas now. At Midas, brake pads or shoes are just $89.95 per axle installed. Be safe. Just a Midas touch. In a 
only five days, Thursdays will make you fall in love. I don't want to pressure you. Take all the time you need. A new season, a new night. The season premiere of Grey's Anatomy, this Thursday at 9, 8 central, only on ABC. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC. So Louisville starts offensively at its own 20-yard line. Brian Brom, a junior out of right here in town. His daddy, Oscar, played here. His brothers, Greg and Jeff, played here. In fact, Jeff's a quarterback coach and coaching his little brother. And he says, you know, Jeff's quite a bit older than me. He's been like a coach more than a brother the whole time. But uh, the whole the whole Brom family has been a big part of Louisville football for a long, long time. Look for a pass on the outside. Brian back to throw. And going down deep in the middle. And oh. One-handed attempt by Yerudi, and he couldn't hold it. He saw he saw Miami blitzing, so he checked to the to the to a takeoff by the receiver on the outside. Saw him working on this the other day. It's a good good checkoff by Brom. And Bob mentioned Yerudi averaging over 20 yards a catch, so he's their big play guy. Doesn't have a grab yet today. I said Louisville had to run the ball in this game in order to win it. They've run the ball 11 times for nine yards. That's, that's not good. That's not good. Probably not going to run it here either. Stripling in motion out of the backfield. Rob to throw. Cross the middle, and now he does make a one-handed catch. Wow, what, what a, a beauty. What a great catch. He doesn't I get mean, a first down, but it's a heck of a grab. Kenny Phillips was all over him, and this ball is just an individual effort by Yerudia. Coming across the middle, watch number one is Kenny Phillips, and he's going to be right in his pocket. As they come across the field, the catch, one-handed catch, concentration, puts it from his left to his right. Give him three catches. <laughs> Four wide receivers in there now, third down and five. Gaines thinking about coming off the corner. Well, they're coming. These safeties are up and over here. The two safeties are a versus run, so he's throwing it outside. And he is throwing it outside, and it's a first down, and it's Harry Douglas again. And Louisville. Keeps the drive going with that third down pass. We talked about the Brahms and Oscar still coaching. And who's he coaching but Bobby Petrino's son. <laughs> you got to love that. Oh, they yeah. keep everything in the family here. Let's see. Petrino coaches Brahms' son and Brahm coaches Petrino's son. I like that. I like that. <laughs> First down for Louisville at the 33-yard line. Brom sets and fires, completes it. Again, a short crossing route to Yerudia, but he got out to the 38-yard line with his forward progress. When they go into that spread formation, Brian Brom goes on a silent count, and you might say, why are they going to do that at their home stadium? They just decided after doing it on the road so many years, it worked better, and they ended up with less penalties. Well, it, it, just because you're at home doesn't mean you can't hear the cadence, and, and that's, that's a problem. They got used to it, doing it so much, that they just didn't like it that way. What I like about Brahm is, it, you know, you talk about a guy relaxed in the pocket, and he's not making mistakes. He's making neat throws. Maybe there only are four yards. But they're but matriculating they're down the field. Here's the stretch play across the 40, and Colby Smith not going to get a first down. He's going to be about two yards shy. So it'll bring up third down and two. There's just so much speed on, on Miami's defense. And I'm not just talking about the guys in the secondary linebackers. But I'm talking about the defensive linemen. They move up and down the line of scrimmage. It's just incredible. So third down and two. A couple, couple of little guys in there next to those big guys. <laughs> you can really see it from the end zone camera. All three wideouts to the top of your screen. Now one comes back in motion, and that's Douglas. He's been their big play guy. They'll keep it on the ground. Stripling with a stiff arm. Runs into a buzzsaw. Led by Glenn Sharp and Kenny Phillips, but he's got the first down. Needed two, and he got three. You know what's amazing about this? When you see Stripling come running in, and then Kenny, Phil uh, Kenny Sh uh, Glenn Sharp, excuse me, tackle him. Watch how the impact is and how you end up going backwards. Here it comes. Here's the, here's the play. Look at number four, Sharp. Bonk. <laughs> it just goes backwards. First it was a horse collar, and then it was a big thud. 
by Glenn Sharp, number four, the junior out of Miami. But a first down for Stripling. Seventh play of the drive coming up. They have it at the 44-yard line. Play action. Brom, deep middle, has got a man, and it's Yerudia in the open. Yerudia with a stiff arm. Touchdown. Did we say he was a big play receiver? You can't do it any better than that. <laughs> Unsportsmanlike conduct on Louisville. That's on the celebration after the touchdown, I believe. 56-yard touchdown strike, Brian Brom to Mario Urudia. Capping an 80-yard drive in just seven plays. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number seven, offense, the penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. Touchdown is good. Well, yesterday, we were talking to Paul Petrino, Bobby's brother and offensive coordinator, and he says... We link, think our wide receivers can beat their corners. That's exactly what happened there. So Art Carmody is in for the point after. For the first time today, it's Louisville in front where they've won 17 of their last 18. When you got a big target, use them. The two safeties are involved inside. Sharp has no help to the inside. Yerudia is 6'6". Gets the possession, gets the position, and then just fights his way into the end zone. So the cards at home have come to life. We'll see if the Hurricanes have an answer with 2.17 left when we return. Your SUV is designed to go off-road, but sometimes the off-road comes to you. Introducing the new Goodyear Forterra with silent armor technology, made with SUV drivers in mind. A layer made with Kevlar means the Forterra is tough and rugged, and extra cushioning means the Forterra rides quietly and comfortably. The new Goodyear Forterra with silent armor technology. Go confidently on the wings of Goodyear. Looking for the love of your life? Log on to eHarmony.com this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday during our free communication weekend. eHarmony.com. Log on today. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. Because your friends are my friends, and my friends are your friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. Introducing the new limited edition Tony Stewart line, only by Old Spice. If your first impression of the University of Louisville is Cardinal football, take a closer look. Now what do you think? The University of Louisville, dare to be great. football on ABC. Bobby Petrino liking what he sees on that last drive. And in fact, on the last two drives, Yerudia, 56-yard touchdown catch on a perfect throw. And following the unsportsmanlike conduct call on Yerudia, they're going to have to be kicking off on their own 20-yard line. So an 80-yard drive and 325. They mixed it up nicely. Yerudia really had three catches. He had the one-handed one with his left hand. He had a little crossing route for five yards. Then they hit him deep from the other side. So he was a big, big part of that 80-yard march. Most of it, in fact. Wouldn't you like to be a receiver in this offense? You bet. How about quarterback? Well, that, too. So the return men are way up around the 20-yard line, anticipating Todd Flannery's kick to land somewhere in the vicinity. And the Johnsons, Bruce and Andrew, are back there waiting on it. And little indecision, and they'll field it at the 15. Bruce Johnson, and nice return out to the 40-yard line. Let's take a look at the touchdown from up on top, Reese. Well, here's what I'm talking about. 
one safety is looking here. The other safety is going to go this way. So down at the bottom, you got the corner by himself. So when Yerudia runs the post, there's nobody in the center of the field. Look at this. He's got he's got to cover the guy all over the field. The safety at the top goes the other way. I mean, the corners for Miami are not that good that they can cover these guys single coverage all over the field. So the return after the shorter kick, 40-yard line is where they'll work offensively with two minutes and change remaining in the half. And they'll keep it on the ground this time and almost break it out of there. Javaris James, who got about six. We asked you the athletic trivia question earlier. What former NFL player came in second in the Red Mile Harness Race in Lexington back in 87? If you've had time to think about it, the guy in second place right way over there, and I know why, because that poor horse was about to die pulling all that weight. <laughs> Paul McGuire lost to Ole Cassini. Cassini probably weighed 100 pounds less than you did. That's not fair. Here's a throw to Greg Olson. And that's a first down in, Saint, uh, in uh, Cardinal territory. Miami has been in Louisville's end of the field. Four to, all four possessions and only have seven points to show for once. I came in second with a lot of class, pal. You did. Let me just tell you what. Miami, four <laughs> pass plays they've had in this first half, over 20 yards, but they only have seven points on the scoreboard. They hit the long one to Jenkins. They missed a field goal. They hit the long one to Shields. And they ended up having to punt. Now it's Kyle Wright looking for more and looking for a place to run. Nice run by Wright. He's got a first down inside the 35-yard line. Good scramble by Kyle Wright, the captain of the offense. He got 14 yards. Sometimes you have to do that. When, you're, when the uh, defense is aggressive and attacking and they've got good coverage, there's nobody left to cover the quarterback, and you've got to do that to keep these defenses uh, honest. Canes go without a huddle with a minute eight remaining. They've got a first down at the 33-yard line. They do have two timeouts left here in the quarter. Might be a blitz coming off the corner. There you go. And right goes the other way. Dangerous pass, but it's caught. And it's Darnell Jenkins again. Nice play on the ball by Will Gay, who was shaken up earlier in the ball game. Is back there playing cornerback. You know, one of the things I hate about, like, prevent defenses, the only thing that prevents you from doing is winning a ball game. It doesn't prevent you from doing to stop anybody. Second down and five. Clock winding its way toward the half-minute mark. Blitz up the middle. Right got hammered as he threw, and it went right through William Gay's hands. Was that Nate Harris again coming on the blitz? Somebody came flying up the middle at Kyle Wright. Brandon Sharp came from the secondary as well, so they sent everybody after the Miami quarterback. Well, that's I don't know why they're not using the timeouts either. I, they, 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 they've got plenty of timeouts to use. Here right comes up Harris the, right up 10, the center, yeah. And Sharp came from the other side. See, he couldn't wait. If he would have been able to wait a little bit until the receiver got a little bit further in on his slant, then he would have had a hit, but nobody was inside to pick up the blitzer. Miami's 0 for 3 on their third down. This is their biggest one of the game so far. Four wide outs. Javaris James stays in the backfield with Kyle Wright, and now they're going to use the timeout, and that's after play had stopped. So Kyle Wright's going to go over and talk to Larry Coker and make sure about this one because they still have plenty of time to try to get a score. Right now, let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. First, the roughing, the punter penalty kept Miami's opening march alive. They took it down the field. And when you get Tyrone Moss in the ball game, he knows how to spell the end zone. Tyrone goes in from a yard out. It was seven to nothing at that point. After Nate Harris recovered a fumble, Brian Brom went to work, throwing deep. And it's Yerudia, 56 yards later for the touchdown. And that, of course, was capped around a field goal as well. And that's why Louisville's got the lead 10-7 with 30 seconds remaining in the half. Monday Night Football on ESPN continues. Joey Porter and Troy Polamalu and uh, the Steelers defense will lead the defending Super Bowl champions as they try to get to Byron Leftwich the Jacksonville Jaguars. Monday Night Football on ESPN Monday, 8.30 Eastern. Also available in high definition on ESPN HD. Call your cable operator or satellite provider today. That ought to be a pretty good one. Steelers and the Jags on Monday nights. So Louisville at home where they have won 13 straight. Second longest winning streak in the country to USC's. And USC will try to keep that intact tonight with their dates on ABC at 8 o'clock against the Nebraska Pro Huskers. Some of the Keynes fans who made it from Miami to Louisville. 
But there's a lot of red in this place. This is a hot ticket. You had to have some pretty serious change if you were trying to get a ticket to this game late. Right in the gun. Here they come. Everybody on the blitz. Wright's going to just get rid of it. He got leveled wow. as he let go. That's a win for the defense. When they force the quarterback just to throw it out of bounds. I mean, we, we, they know that the Louisville is going to blitz 65, 70% of the time. Get him outside the pocket. Number 30, Thomas is the guy that comes up in the middle, and he is a safety. I mean, you talk about taking a chance. They sent eight guys. John Petty, who hit the left upright from 40, he'll try a 45-yarder here to try to tie the game. He missed it left badly. The NCAA's leading scorer, John Petty, is over so far today. And Louisville holds on to its lead. Yeah, he's a four-year guy that's been kicking for four years for Miami. But he needs to give him a boost because they're not doing well on offense. And if they could just get a field goal through, at least the offense would feel like, well, I got something out of that drive to build on for the next one. Now they're going to have to do some major adjustments as far as their offense is concerned when they get in there inside the locker room at halftime. Because Louisville, I mean, they, they looked a little weak right at the beginning, but they've tightened everything up. Well, everybody talks about Louisville's offense and the high scoring and the 40-plus points and all these games and all that other stuff and what they average, but it's their defense that's really aggressive. And their defense is ranked, is ranked third in the nation against the run. So Bobby Petrino went to a locker room halftime lead two years ago against the Canes of 24-7. to Today he's only got a three-point lead as we check in with Bonnie. Coach, you really wanted to showcase Kyle Wright's arm today. What's their defense doing to keep you out of the end zone? Well, they've got a good defensive football team, and we, we knew that. I like to thanks Kelly and us. We, we need to hit the field goal. We've been in position, turn it over once, and we missed two makeable field goals. We know Louisville has a high-octane offense. Talk about your secondary and maybe where some of the adjustments need to be in the second half. Well, I think uh, we need to put pressure on the quarterback. He's having too long to throw the football. we got to put more pressure on him. That'll make it a little tougher. Coach, thanks. So, Miami on the road and trailing the 12th ranked team in the country. 10-7 our halftime score. John Craig and Doug will have updates coming up at halftime in a minute. As you heard Paul Rogers call it on WHAS in Louisville, his team ahead 10-7. Cardinals over Miami, and they were ahead of them two years ago by 24-7. Out of whack stat, 27 plays in Louisville territory, 18 for Miami. They got seven points to show for it, fellas. I think uh, Larry Coker going to halftime said the whole thing. You know, uh, they made their field goal, and we missed two field goals talking about Miami. That's the difference in the ball game. They missed from 40 and 45, and they had a fumble down inside the 10-yard line. What are they going to do in the second half? I think the one thing with their offense for Miami has to do is they got to pick up the blitzes. They know they're going to blitz. they yep. got to pick them up. And the other thing, I mean, I, I agree with Bob. We were talking off, off the mic. Moss, get Moss in the game. Get yeah. this kid back in the backfield. Yeah. Well, we'll see how it goes in the second half. Remember, this is the biggest game that Louisville's ever played on their home field. Two years ago, they had the Canes down 24-7. They let them off the hook. 34 points in the second half for Miami. They went on to win it 41-38. to That was the only loss for the Cardinals that season. Now they want to be in the big time. If they can win this one at home, it puts them in the big time. We'll see how the second half goes. Miami will get the football first. Todd Flannery will tee it up. And Bruce and Andrew Johnson will be back deep for the Canes. There they are. Beautiful day in Louisville, a packed house. The hottest ticket in sports in this town in a long, long time, especially one that involved football and not basketball. Here's the kick, and we're underway in the third quarter. This one might be returnable for Bruce Johnson. No, oh, he's going to take a knee. Miami will work from the 20 after we check in with Bonnie. Brad, Miami had the momentum early in this game. Bobby Petrino thought that changed when Nate Harris recovered the Charlie Jones fumble in the first quarter. He's pleased with the way the front seven's putting pressure on Kyle Wright. Wants a secondary to cover the deep ball better. Offensively, the Cardinals are used to balance. They don't have it so far. Only 14 yards on 13 carries. Said the line's not been able to block better, but he'd like to get the run game going in the second half. That's what Paul Paul said one of his uh, 
game plans was they got to be able to run the football and so far they have not and guess who Tyrone Moss boys you called it he's in the backfield to open the third quarter for the Canes from the 20 yard line and here he comes there he, and there he goes down for a loss of three they knew he was coming too. Zach Anderson and Okoye on the defensive front made the stops take a look at the Pacific Life game summary statistically in the first half turnovers even 0 for 4 on third down conversions for Miami great starting field position but then when you don't convert third downs you don't get anything out of it right a lot of big plays to be uh, to be had by both offenses because both defenses are so aggressive their corners, the defensive backs are out there by themselves. Zellner, the tight end, playing fullback in front of Moss on second down and 13. They give it to Tyrone again. And he's not going to get back to the original line of scrimmage. Got a couple back. So back-to-back -back runs by the guy that we said they would need in the second half. Will Gay makes a stop that time. Brad, I'll tell you what. Nick, would you take a look at this? Look at Louisville. Look at them on the line of scrimmage. There are eight guys around that line of scrimmage. And there's three backs in the backfield. They are crowding the line. They're telling you we are coming after you, and you cannot sit there and try to run the football. Remember, Miami, uh, Louisville rather, came in ranked third in the country against the rush. Now, they had not played the kind of team Miami is, and they forced a third and 11 here. Kyle Wright is 0 for 4 on third downs. He's in the shotgun. And he might be under the gun. Almost intercepted. Zach Anderson in a zone blitz. The defensive end dropped way back in coverage. Yeah. He almost had one. Yeah, he never saw him. All he's seeing is the blitzing, and Zach Anderson drops back. And it's a good start for the second half for the Louisville Cardinals. Brian Monroe, this is about the spot that they roughed the punter earlier in the ballgame. Patrick Carter is back deep for Louisville. They should get good field position out of this. High kick, but not that deep. Carter's going to call fair catch, and they will have great field position for their opening drive of the third quarter as they're going to be near midfield at about the 47-yard line. So here comes Louisville with the lead and the ball just two minutes into the second half. If you missed it in the first half, Brian Brom, a perfect strike to Mario Arudia, a 56-yard touchdown pass in the second quarter, and there's Brian's numbers, 9 out of 13, 168, and 1. From the 47-yard line. You almost get that feeling of thinking big play right here. Oh, sure. <laughs> it's still, it's still going to be there because Miami wants to stop the run with their safeties. Fake the handoff inside. Brom's going to throw to a wide open tight end, and he's got him down the sideline. Oh. And he got tattooed out of bounds by Kenny Phillips, but it's a big gainer again for Bartage, and that's the second time he's caught a pass similar to that and gotten good yardage. What you're seeing is the imagination of Right here, the imagination, he's going to block, block, and then he comes off the block. It's just the imagination and the ingenuity of Bobby Petrino calling these plays. Let me just tell you one other thing, When you go downfield, you're going to take on a defensive guy. Don't stand straight up and let him whack you. <laughs> Barnage, three catches, 45 yards. Now they come the other way, and they give the handoff in the hole to Smith. And that's the best run he's had today. So they run almost the same looking play, only they come from the other side. This time they do hand it off. And they're going to go without a huddle. I like this. I like it. You got to get Miami sit back on their heels now, and they're going to get right up to the line of scrimmage and go. Second down at the 34, and it's Stripling, and Stripling's got a crease down to the 17-yard line. Boy, oh. is this a great call, Brad, Bob. I'm telling you, they... They just, and this was called from the sideline. Brian Brown looks at the sidelines and the coach says, get him at the line of scrimmage and let's go. Here they go again. Miami can't substitute because the Cardinals are going without a huddle. They mark it at the 16-yard line. First down, Cardinals with a lead. Stripling again, Stripling down inside the 10. Brandon Merriweather made the stop at a seven-yard gain for George Stripling, the sophomore, another Florida native out of Jacksonville. It's a very simple play. It's the same play almost that they ran the last time, but I like the strategy. They wait to the second half before they show this against Miami, and it's working. There is a flag on this play, and it's, it's against a, Louisville. I think it's a personal foul. Well, I'll tell you what, was that some smart football? 
Miami couldn't get any substitutes in. They never got ready. They're walking around on defense, and Louisville just went right up to the line of scrimmage and ran two running plays. And Tom Zamorski's uh, referee, Mike, is obviously on the fritz right now a little bit. I believe it was a personal foul, and if that's the case, it's going to take it way back outside the 25-yard line somewhere. Brian Brom has hit his last five passes. He's 10 out of 14 going back to late in the second quarter. So now the line of scrimmage is at the 24-yard line. And again, this is the opening march of the third quarter offensively for the Cardinals. If you're just joining us, they lead 10-7. First down and 18. Five receivers for Brian Brom, who's in the shotgun. Brom, plenty of time, and now he's going to run with it. Brian Brom diving down, and he got it back near the 11-yard line. He doesn't look like a guy that had major knee surgery not that long ago, does he? And that's a big play for Brom. Just, just get out, pick up some yardage. Bobby Petrino told us yesterday he's not playing as well as he did last year before he hurt the knee, but he's coming back. The right knee has a sleeve on it. That's the one where he had the ACL surgery. He had a dislocated kneecap, strained patella tendon, a severely bruised femur. I mean, it was a mess. He's got a brace on the left knee, but it's the right knee that has that tight sleeve around it. And he sets up the throw in the pocket. Now he's scrambling again and throws and almost, uh-oh, uh-oh, going to be an offense, uh, pass interference call. Yerudia was there, and it was Bruce Johnson who apparently got him around the back. And the flag flies in. Here's the call. It is pass interference on Bruce Johnson. So that's an automatic first down. And the drive stays alive for Louisville. Louisville, they came out in the third quarter, held defensively. There you see his arm on the back of the big 6'6 wide receiver. Miami got the ball first in this third quarter. Cardinals defense stiffened. They forced a punt. They've taken it now the length of the field after getting great field position on the punt and taking it down to a first and goal at the seven-yard line. They lead 10-7 here, four minutes into the third quarter. And it's Colby Smith. And he's inside the five. Eric Moncour, the first to get him that was a for big, the Hurricanes. That was a big penalty against Miami. Interference gives them a first down. That play was third down and five. They had not picked it up. So Louisville with a fresh set of downs inside the 10-yard line. We said this once before. At the four-yard line now, if you're going to throw a pass, throw it here. Timeout, Louisville. We'll take a timeout with them with 10 and a half to go third quarter. Cardinals are knocking on the door. Hurricanes are hoping they can hold them out of the end zone. Susie and I retire, we'll be taking trips like this whenever we want. It's a good thing we've been planning. At Pacific Life, giving you the right tools to help you meet your financial goals is what we're all about. As you look to the future, look to Pacific Life. Ask your financial professional about Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. So what's this about the bottle? Well, you know how we look so fit in our swim trunks. Yes. I've discovered that our Guinness Draft has only 125 calories. Only 125 calories? Brilliant! What else are you working on? You know how your skin burns if you're on the beach too long? Yes, it stings like the dickens. Well, I've invented a lotion that protects you from the sun's rays. <laughs> Brilliant! Brilliant! Guinness Draft has only 125 calories. Enjoy it responsibly. Brilliant! <laughs> Chevy Tahoe. It has an available 320 horsepower. With the best fuel efficiency in its class. Tahoe, the power to give something back. 
That's an American Revolution. Television's hottest sensation, Dancing with the Stars, live ABC Tuesday. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC. This ESPN production is available on ABC HD, presented by Dish Network. Brad Nestler, Bob Greasy, Paul McGuire, Bonnie Bernstein in Louisville, and Hunter Cantwell has come in at quarterback. You think option right here, I guess, huh? At the four-yard line. Touchdown! Colby Smith. Maybe that's what he wanted everybody to think. The cards up. 16 to 7 with the extra point coming up. Boy, you talk about run straight to the corner and do not veer at all. Colby Smith just took the ball and never veered at all. He just went right to the flag and it scored. Why put the other quarterback in? I think Petrino was just playing with the minds of uh, Randy Shannon. They were saying, Randy Shannon reacts to everything the offense does. If you substitute, he substitutes. So I think Petrino was just putting him in to, to hand off to a running back just to get the defense thinking. 53 yards in 239. That's Brian Brom on the sideline. Unless he was shaken up, I got to agree with Bob. The play before the timeout. They're looking and they do. They have an ice bag on his hand, I think. I think they've got an ice bag on his hand, fellas. Here's the last play. He went down oh, very yeah. awkwardly. Oh, his right leg, yeah. And they do have a bag of ice on his right wrist or his right hand. Yeah. So, boy, that would be a huge blow to Louisville. Luckily, they got it in the end zone. And now we'll see if he'll return or not. That's going to be the story of the day right now. Let's check in with Bonnie. Well, guys. This wasn't just some fake jog to throw Miami's defense up. Brian Brom sprained his thumb earlier in that series when he hit the ground, and believe it or not, he's done for the day. Oh, boy. So now the big question in the biggest game ever in this stadium and maybe ever for this program is can they keep a 10-point lead against the Miami Hurricanes who have never lost to them, and can they do it with Hunter Cantwell, a former walk-on, the backup quarterback? Well, they like Cantwell. They said that he can really throw the football. And, you know, the, the, his biggest problem, and what you should be, is reading defenses. And if they start stacking up and start coming at him, that well, may shake him up. If you read their, their preseason stuff, they had two preseason All-Americans, and they had two preseason Heisman candidates. They're both out. They're both out. Michael Bush and Brian Braum now. Here's the kick, finally returnable from the two for Bruce Johnson. And Johnson slips down and is buried at the 15-yard line. So now there'll be a lot of pressure also on the Cardinal defense. They did their job. There's a flag down at the 20-yard line. They did their job the first time Miami had the ball in this quarter. And now we got a Hurricane player down and a penalty marker down. And it's Zellner, Chris Zellner, who's played extensively, in fact, started the game with two tight ends for Miami, and he's played fullback as well. So the penalty is going to go against Miami. The injured player is a Miami Hurricane, and he is obviously in a lot of pain. So that was not Great a good return. kick return. Half the distance to the goal, first down. So that'll back it up half the distance to the goal. See if we can see where Zellner got involved in all of this. Looks like he's the blocker right there, and his ankle rolled under. That's uh, almost friendly fire, his own back. Went under him and so did his right ankle. And ugh. we'll try to check on Chris when we come back. 10 minutes, 18 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Louisville's got a 10 point lead. Thank <laughs> you. 
from Taco Bell's value menu. I'm full! Introducing Taco Bell's half-pound value menu lineup. Now fill up on any of three hefty half-pound burritos. To keep your stomach and your wallet full, think outside the bun. There are some crazy blades out there, so reach for the ultimate bomb. Replenishing aftershave bomb with Care Protect soothes and repairs the damage from shaving. Only from Nivea for Men. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge to help you find your perfect flat panel TV. I pledge to watch football only on Saturday and Sunday. I pledge to set up your HD right. And Monday. I pledge to show this off to my girlfriends. And sometimes Thursday. I pledge to be anyone's price. I pledge to be the house where all the kids want to hang out. For the ultimate viewing experience, I pledge to get you the best picture quality for your HD TV. Guaranteed. But we'll give you a $100 Best Buy gift card. That's HD done right at Best Buy. ESPN's College Football on ABC. Brought to you by Chevrolet, America's brand. Chevy, an American revolution. The Home Depot. You can do it, we can help. And Allstate. Are you in good hands? A position you'll never find Paul McGuire in. What, one of thought? Deep yep, thought? deep thought. Well, they bring in extra tight ends. DeLeon Farr is in now with Zellner out. Tyrone Moss straight up the gut a yard or so. I didn't hear what you said. I'm in deep thought. <laughs> Jarrell Mabry, a big, big fullback, 266-pounder. They got him in there. They have Farr in there and Greg Olson as well. So they had their big jumbo set in front of a jumbo crowd. At Papa John's Cardinal Stadium, the Louisville Cardinals, 17 unanswered points today after Miami took the 7-0 lead. They had a big lead two years ago against this team and let it slip away. And now they're going to try to hold a 10-point lead without their star quarterback. Brian Brom is done for the day, apparently, with a screened right thumb. This is Kyle Wright for Miami, though, and he's trying to get the Canes back in it. Kyle throws short. Oh, that was dangerous. Incomplete intended for Darnell Jenkins. And Jenkins is down. Miami's guys uh, falling like flies right now, and hopefully Darnell's going to be okay. He had a big 51-yard reception earlier in the ballgame. He plays in this one. Brian Brom going deep, 56 yards to Arudia. But then maybe just as important, going down awkwardly. It's not his knee, but his thumb. And thankfully, it's not his knee. And that means it's going to put some pressure on Hunter Cantwell if they get the ball back. They are hoping to do that. They're 0 for 5 on third downs. Third and 7 here. Here they come. Right from the end zone. And he got it complete out to the 20-yard line and a first down to Sam Shields. Give some credit to Mike Cassidy and the defensive coordinator and this defense. Miami has not figured out this zone blitz of the Cardinals all afternoon. Everybody, every time they get in a third down situation, somebody is coming free over here on this side. This time Kyle Wright buying himself some time. And boy, this is a heck of a throw to Shields with the pressure bearing down on him. That was Jackson, number 11. No one even touched him. First down for the Canes. Three wide outs, so give it off to Moss. And Tyrone got a yard or two. At the conclusion of today's game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team to honor their determination. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Miami Moss comes out. Miami scored on their first drive of the ball game, and they haven't gotten down there yet. I mean, they, they turned the ball over once. But this is their seventh possession. Scored on their first one, missed two field goals along the way. So again, if you missed it, five possessions in Louisville territory in the first half and only one touchdown to show for it for Miami. Second and nine. Blitz coming off the corner. Right loads and fires deep. Overshot his receiver, and he threw it right to Will Gay, and that's maybe why Will is playing corner instead of wide receiver. I'm not sure. <laughs> Will Gay, all he had to do was put his arm up and fair catch it. I mean, this ball is coming down, and he's backing up. And he didn't get himself in a position. Watch number 21. Forget about the wide receiver leg. What's this here? 
Look at him. Now he's what? He's got the ball. I got the ball. I got the ball. I don't got no, the no, ball. No, no. I'm not. <laughs> you got to catch it. That's a fair catch. Louisville not? only had nine interceptions all of last year, and that's something they were hoping to improve on. And that was one that they just gave away. Third-year starter and a captain on defense. And uh, they've only got one the interception in their first two ball games, yeah. also. But they they can rush the passer. Third and nine. They're going to probably rush it again. Here they come. Right. Has time. Throws a dark, beautiful pass out to Lance Leggett. And Leggett's got a first down for Miami out at the 42-yard line. See, this is really the first time that Louisville absolutely showed him the blitz way, way too early. These guys came down the line of scrimmage, and that time Miami, what they did is they kept enough people in to block all the red shirts. Well, Miami's not going to have a chance to win this ball game unless they can figure out that front seven and the blitzing scheme of the Cardinals. It's a young offensive line for Miami. You have Fox, Jason Fox, a true freshman starting at left tackle. First and ten. Tyrone Moss, nice juke to the outside and powers his way and gets what he can out about the 49-yard line. Bobby Buchanan came up to help out on the stop, and if that's a familiar name, there he is, number 34, Ray's little brother. Ray Buchanan, a great player here, an All-American, and then an All-Pro with the Indianapolis Colts and the Atlanta Falcons, and Ray was uh, at the game, older brother Ray. Uh, honored uh, here today was down in the end zone earlier got a nice ovation from the crowd back to watch his little brother Bobby who's a sophomore and a uh, guy that they really think is going to be a good one uh, he can play he's sharing that corner over there with Gavin Smart second down at four at the 48 right rolls away from the pressure completes it to his big fullback, and he's got a first down, and he's still rolling around to about the 40-yard line. A pickup of 12, Darrell Mabry. Coming up on Monday night, football on ESPN continues. That strong Steelers defense leads the defending Super Bowl champions. They'll try to corral Byron Leftwich of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Monday night football on ESPN. Monday, 8.30 Eastern. Also available in high definition on ESPN HD. Call your cable operator or satellite provider today. Well, here's another trip for the Canes into Louisville land. Ninth play of the drive at the 40-yard line of the Cardinals. Trying to come back from 10 down. Right hit as he throws. Ball is loose. It's a fumble, and Louisville's got it. John Russell made the hit. Bob said they're going to have to figure out where these blitzes are coming from or they're going to have trouble, and that time their quarterback got nailed and out came the ball. Look from down here. He just comes up. That's Jackson, number 11. Or number 13, sorry, Russell. And the fullback just needs to block him. You got enough people, you just have to do what your assignment is. There's Russell just flies in and the ball pops out. And the Cardinals have got it. At the 48-yard line, Earl Heyman, the defensive tackle, with the fumble recovery. There's Big Earl. <laughs> he put that paw out there, and there was nobody going to take it away from him. And this may be under review right now. I don't think there was any question that Kyle Wright's arm was not coming forward, but we'll get a third angle for you here. Uh, he's going back now when he gets hit, and that, that ball is that just That arm never had a new. chance. Never did. Russell just makes the hit at the perfect time. That's a, I, it, it's just amazing to me that, that Miami has really not figured out these blitzes. And the one thing that, that when you have a team that you know, and you said it yourself, Bobby, but 65% of the time they blitz, mm -hmm. you know a team's going to blitz. Play action doesn't slow them down. If you're going to get back and pass, go back and pass. Because all you're doing is taking more time away from the quarterback by play action because it's not freezing anybody. John Russell, Jr. out of Alexander City, Alabama, made the hits. Earl Heyman, a sophomore out of Louisville, made the recovery. And I think we're going to see just what we saw on the field. Kyle Wright knows it, or he'd have his hat on over there. After review, video confirms the play is called on the field. Down. First down, Cardinals with a 10-point lead. But remember, the number two quarterback is in. You know, I'm I'm more I'm just as impressed with Louisville's defense as I am with their offense. I agree with you. Mike Cassidy is second year. And he's done a good job with this group of guys, and they really 
Well, Mike told us, you know, we're not going to be afraid to bring pressure. <laughs> they bring he, in well, pressure. When he sat down there and we talked to him, he said, didn't he look relaxed? I mean, he really did. I mean, it was like, I know something you don't know, and I know how good we could be. Best starting field position for the Cardinals with a 10-point lead. They're going to let Cantwell throw it. And he zips it downfield, and he's got Harry Douglas all the way inside the five. And I'll tell you what, does it make a difference when you have time to throw the ball? And I don't care who you are at quarterback, but when you have that much time, Cantwell stood back, he steps up, watch how much time he has. These safeties are committed to stopping the run. That leads the, the whole middle of the field open to the two outside receivers. Beautiful strike. And here's your backup quarterback coming in for a preseason All-American, and he throws a rocket. First and goal. Full house backfield. Colby Smith's a tail. He gets the call. And he gets about a yard, maybe a little bit more. Kenny Phillips closed things down. Kurt Quarterman, they sometimes bring in in the short yardage situation, and they had him in there again, basically an extra lineman, 328-pounder. Let's see what kind of formation they show. You know, Brian is hurting that he's not out there, but he's got to be loving yeah. that his offense is taking it down the field. You don't know how bad that is either. You That's know, right. You don't know if it's just a screen thumb or, it, you know, it could be worse. Second and goal. Smith again, left side, and he's in. Touchdown. Yard drive. Art Carmody in for the point after. Same score as two years ago at the Orange Bowl, but now it's deep in the third quarter, not halftime. Time is of the essence for the Canes on the road. Cantwell, the rocket to Douglas, who's been the big play man. And then Colby Smith does the rest from two yards out. 12th ranked Louisville trying to stamp their program as premier. They lead Miami 24 to 7. Bergwood, you're on the goalpost truck. You're on the car. I'm on lookout. Bergwood, are you wearing spandex? Yeah, I got them out of my mom's drawer. It's very sexy. You think? No. Yeah. Go, 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 go. Oh. This is going to look great in my yard. Bergwood? Is the strength of Allstate behind your favorite college football team? Jake and I are going to Home Depot. You want anything? Yes, I do. Get the innovative kitchen you've always wanted at the Home Depot from brands like Thomasville Cabinetry, Craftmate, and American Woodmark. Right now, get up to a $500 Home Depot gift card with your cabinet purchase. The Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. We're back to see what happens when you don't use degree. Today's match, Odor versus a best man winging his speech. I told Steve, why buy the cow when you get the milk for free? His jokes aren't landing tonight, Al. He's not smelling good. And the bride just got a nose full. Oh, oh that stinks. Down goes Grandma. He should have used a greedy odor. Its body responsive formula prevents odor from existing all day. Degree, it won't let you down. In only five days, Thursdays will make you laugh. Do you have sex with that brain surgeon? Not today, anyway. I would. He's hot. A new season. A new night. The season premiere of Grey's Anatomy this Thursday at 9, 8 central only on ABC. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC. Louisville with a 24-7 lead. Touchdowns their last couple of times. In fact, 21 points in their last three possessions. And they've taken control of the game. Can they hold on to it? That's the question. 24 to 7. Todd Flannery to kick off. And boy, the stadium was just rocking during the commercial. Everybody's still standing 
after that last touchdown. Yeah, but I wonder how many of them are thinking what happened a couple of years ago down there. I know it's on their minds. Yep. Ryan Hill and Andrew Johnson back deep. Todd's coming to get it. And a line drive kick. It'll be fielded and bobbled. Ball loose, picked up at the 12 by Hill. Now he's given ground to try to gain some, and he's going to go down at about the 11-yard line. I beg your pardon, the six-yard line. Kyle Wright's going to be in a bad spot, and he's been in a bad spot most of this ball game, especially in this half. He had decent numbers at halftime, but they just keep bringing the heat, and they keep getting the hits. And he's running for his life back there. And the last time he fumbled, and that turned into a touchdown. You know, Brad, at the beginning of this game, I said about Miami to win this football game, it, it, it falls on the shoulders of both the offensive line and the defensive line. And I'm going to tell you right now, Louisville's offensive line and defensive line have been taking it to Miami all afternoon. And in Miami, both lines have done nothing. Javars James, a single setback. He'll get the call, and he's going to be lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. So brings up second down and again they're inside their own 10 yard line. Not a spot where you want to make one more mistake or things could really unravel on you. Yeah but you can't get conservative either. I mean you're, you're, you're almost getting yourself out of this ball game. The, the linebacker number uh, number six uh, filling in uh, Smith just comes right up the middle three the two tackles open up. And, and Smith is right in the backfield. Preston Smith's done a heck of a job. Abe Brown got shaken up with a bad shoulder and has come back to play, but Smith's in there now. Wright going to try to throw a slip screen. He throws it wide out to Shields, and Shields got across the 10, and Preston Smith, right on cue, makes the tackle. Preston, another Georgia native out of Sandersville, 6'1", 220, junior. But the middle here, again, right up the middle. Yeah. That time, yeah, that was Nate Harris that time. I mean, they're, they're running quarters and safety up the middle, and nobody's even thinking about blocking them. Remember, third down has not been good to Miami today. Third down and seven. They're two out of seven on their third down conversions. And now it's Kyle Wright in the shotgun. Here comes the pressure from the corners again. Wright's got to step out of the pocket, run, and down he goes. Oh, Latarius Thomas is the guy that finally stopped him in Miami. He's got to give it up again. <laughs> Thomas, you know, when you're a defensive back and you got a shot at a quarterback, you don't get that many. And on this one here, Thomas did. He got a shot. Wright's coming out, and he just lays it to him. The bottom line is the defense is confusing the, the Miami offensive line. They don't know where they're coming from. Brian Monroe to punt. Patrick Carter waiting on the other end. Monroe, the left footer, with the kick. This could be returnable for Carter. At the 43, Carter across midfield. And the transfer from Georgia Tech gets to the 47-yard line and back into Miami territory. Remember the last meeting was two years ago at the Orange Bowl. Devin Hester is the guy that changed the complexion of the game in a hurry with a punt return. And then Frank Gore blasted his way into the end zone, and they came from down 24-7. 34 second-half points for Miami to win the ball game, 41-38. Now it's Louisville, 24-7. Same score they had Miami down at halftime the last time they played. But remember now, there's only three minutes left in the third quarter. He just joined us. Hunter Cantwell, the backup quarterback, in for Louisville. Brian Braum out with a sprained thumb. Inside handoff to Colby Smith. And Colby got about a yard, and that's it. It'll bring up second down and long. Let's check in with Bonnie. Well, Brad, if you're from Kentucky, you probably know who Hunter Cantwell is. He threw for over 7,200 yards for Paducah Tillman High, but it's an interesting story. He wound up as a walk-on here at Louisville because Bobby Petrino thinks, ah, he kind of fell through the, the cracks, but Petrino thinks this guy has an NFL arm, and he's played under pressure because, remember, Brahm had already hurt his knee by the time the team got to the Gator Bowl last year, and even though they lost, Petrino said he played really well. Well, he threw for 216 and three touchdowns, did have three interceptions, and he got bounced around pretty good by that Virginia Tech defense, and he just kept getting up. He tries a pass to Corey Thompson's incomplete. Brandon Merriweather 
broke it up. Bob, they're still, I, I, they're still Miami defensively. They're still playing man to man on the outside. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, they're playing man to man all over the field, what, and they're getting beat. What makes them think they can cover? Well, Louisville is playing man to man coverage on Miami's receivers also. But they just don't have time to get them the ball. That's right. Big difference. Now Cantwell with three wideouts to his right in the shotgun. Nice That's third down hands. and ten. Holding hands right there. Silent count. Here's that counter trying to trap it back the other way. And it's not going to go anywhere for Colby Smith. <laughs> Did you hear that sigh? Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. You're not scoring? Whoa. You got to give the ball back? Doesn't matter. Because Miami can't do anything with it anyway. They've scored on four of their last five possessions. As you mentioned, Brad, three touchdowns in a row. Todd Flannery to punts. Fourth down. Kind of squandered their field position, Louisville, unless they fake the punt here, then maybe they don't. Taking a long time. They're running all the they clock they can. They don't care if they, no, get, they, they back get back five yards. And they hit the punter, but no flag down. And now the return on at the 10-yard line. And he swarmed under down there by the Cardinals special teams. <laughs> the problem is Miami doesn't have Devin Hester. Or That's right. Or Sonoris Moss or some of those guys that helped him come back That's a couple exactly years ago. Right. They're trying to find a punt returner and a quality one. And sometimes they just don't come along every day. Let's take a look. They come after the kick. Oh. Uh, a little bit of an acting job there, but uh, Flannery did go down. So, line of scrimmage is going to be about the 11-yard line for Miami. New fall season's coming up, guys. They're going to all ends of the earth, starting with Alaska, on their way to all 50 states. It's a two-hour season premiere next Sunday, September 24th, Extreme Makeover Home Edition. That's uh, 24th at 7, 6 Central. We've been trying to get McGuire Extreme Makeover, and there's not enough spackle in the world to fix him. Run up the middle. Line of scrimmage, and that's about it. Uh, Moby Okoye makes the stop, and we get a update from Matt. Brad, the slugfest everyone expected has materialized at Auburn, LSU, and the Tigers going at it. Yards, points, and a premium, but Auburn puts together a 12-point, 80-yard touchdown drive. First TD allowed by that LSUD in 17 quarters. And at raucous Austin Stadium, Paul Thompson with a sneak to tie at 13. A couple of good ones going on there and a good one here if you're a Louisville Cardinal fan. They lead 24-7. Might be the final snap of the third quarter. Blitz comes from the inside. Kyle Wright. They pick that blitz up. He's still got to scramble out of trouble and throw on the run, and it's incomplete with two seconds left in the quarter. Gavin Smart was back there covering. Larry Coker, an unbelievable record of 54 and 10, but it doesn't seem to matter to anybody in Miami right now. He's won a national championship in his first year, and now he's one of those guys they put on that proverbial hot seat thing. Yeah, and uh, you know, it's not fair. I, I really don't think it's fair. Uh, they've had trouble with uh, LSU. They got blown out in the, uh, the bowl game. They had trouble with uh, FSU at the beginning of the season. Quality team. Now they're finding going on the road here in Louisville. This is a quality football team as well. Three wide receivers. They'll shift Sam Shields, the freshman now, over in the slot on the right side on third down and nine. Barring a penalty, final play of the quarter. Kyle Wright fires, completes, and he's got a first down out across the 30, and he got it to Lance Leggett. So Miami stays alive with the drive, but it will continue in the fourth quarter. We played three, and it's 24-7. to seven. They're all about beating the Canes. Will they be able to? ESPN's presentation of college football on ABC returns after this message. And a word from our ABC stations. can change quickly. Make sure your insurance stays in sync. Travelers.
It's finally time for the season premiere. I don't do that. Why not? I'm a Republican. <gasps> The season premiere of Desperate Housewives, Sunday, September 24th at 9, 8 central, only on ABC. This is it. The Chevy model year end event is almost over. The last of the 06s are going fast, so come get your Chevy before someone else does. Like Silverado Halftime, J.D. Power & Associates' highest ranked large pickup in initial quality. Get $5,500 total cash back on all 2006 Chevy Silverado half-ton extended cabs. Claim yours before they're gone. See your Southern Chevy dealers or visit southernchevydealers.com. Impressive. Yeah, thanks. It, it really turned out nice. Uh, especially... We've stocked up. Now, so can you. A tailgating sale. Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. Bob Upsall, only on Channel 9 Eyewitness News. Brian Brahm is heading to the locker room. Probably for x-rays on the right hand. Meanwhile, his counterpart for the Hurricanes, Kyle Wright's got a first down at its own 34-yard line, but his team is down 17 as we open the fourth quarter. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Paul McGuire, Bonnie Bernstein from Louisville. Pass complete, Greg Olson. Olson trying to break tackles. That's only the second catch he's had today, and uh, they're trying to get everybody involved in the offense right now. But you want to establish your team as a BCS contender, maybe play for a national championship, you got to beat somebody like Miami. They got them where they want them right now. You know, we do this every week, and we talk to coaches every week. And when I went into that building yesterday, the Howard Schnellenberger building, by the way, and talked with Bobby Petrino and his coaches, I came away very impressed with Bobby Petrino and what he's done. I know, Paul, when practice the other day, we were all out there, and uh, you said, I've never seen a team practice this well. Well, I have never seen a team practice that hard. And they, they decide, I love what Petrino said. He said, you know what? I don't like sprints. I don't like, after a practice session, to run my guys into the ground. I would rather run them into the ground when they're practicing so they learn something as they go. I just like the upbeat of this, their practices, and I'm going to tell you what, it pays off. They've got the facilities. They're planning on adding on to the stadium, which is already a beautiful facility in and out. And now they've got 17th right Miami. Right where they want them with 13.45 remaining. And you can hear the crowd coming to life. Third down and three. They got him where they want him. They got him in third down. And that hasn't been good to the Canes today. They're two out of eight on third downs. Kyle Wright going to load it and air it long, and it's way out there and over everybody's head. Ryan Hill was the intended receiver. That's part of the problem for Miami. With Jenkins being hurt and out, a true freshman, Ryan Hill, is in there, along with another true freshman. Miami's had problems at wide receivers. It all started when uh, Jola left last year, and then when Ryan Moore was uh, still suspended, suspended. Still suspended this year. Uh, they've got a problem with depth at wide receiver. Brian Monroe has been a busy punter. Oh, they got close to him again. They hit him. Patrick Carter over the shoulder catch is going to be either a roughing or running into the kicker penalty back on the other end. That's a Koye, number 91, that did it. And, and I don't, you know, this one, this call here, if they, if they call roughing because his leg was extended and he hit him in that leg that was extended, you're exposed. You can't hit a guy like that. This one's going to be a first down either way because it was only fourth and three. Exactly. He tried to back. It looked like he planted his foot right about where Monroe was trying to land. He's trying right to there. put the brakes on. Boom. But see where he caught him? He caught him in the chest when his leg was extended. Kicker, 91 on the receiving team. Five-yard penalty. The yardage will roll in a first down. All right, if he doesn't make that call, guys, would you be hollering for a flag? Sure, probably. Yes. 
Amobi Okoye is one of the captains. He's a smart ball player. You know, I'm talking real smart. He oh, started yeah. college. He got <laughs> recruited when he was 15. He played as a freshman when he was 16. He just turned 19 two months ago, and he's a senior captain. This is his 38th game. He's graduating. He came from Nigeria with his family yep. when he was younger, and they moved to Alabama. He wanted to test into a different grade so he could be with his brothers and sisters. He went right into high school. <laughs> That's a smart kid. He knows better. A smart kid. Look out, right. Kyle Wright's nail by Brandon Sharp. Third sack of the day for Louisville. Everybody talks about Jarius James, the outstanding freshman. But look, look at James here. He doesn't get the block. Oops, who am I supposed to block? Yeah, that's what they don't like about freshman yeah. tailbacks, no matter exactly. how good they might be. Why don't you play these young guys? Because they don't know who to block. And Javaris goes out and Tyrone Moss yeah. comes back in. Yeah, that's why That's why you play the veteran players. And if the young kids are in there, until they know what they're doing, if they're in there, you give them the ball and let them do their thing. If not, get them out. Kyle Wright knows what he's doing. He just doesn't have time to do it. Second and 18. Going to throw a pass out to Moss, and he's buried by Okoye. What a great play by Okoye. Okoye saw the screen, read it perfectly, and got himself out to the outside. So the Louisville Cardinals on their home field, where they've won 13 straight, are 12 minutes away from maybe their most signature win in the history of their football program. They lead the Miami Hurricanes 24-7 to here in the fourth quarter. Brad Nessler... Bob Greasy, Paul McGuire, Bonnie Bernstein, a fired up Bobby Petrino, a fired up Louisville sold out stadium. Oh, they are getting what they came for right now, aren't they? Third and 18, here comes a blitz. Right, incomplete, broken up by Will Gay. You know what I really loved about this play with Will Gay? There was no showboating. He didn't try to intercept the ball. He knew he couldn't get to it. All he knew he could do was get his hand on the ball and knock it away. It was third and long. Look at this. It's, it's a Koye number 91 coming in, putting the pressure. But I'll tell you what, that was just an outstanding play by a, by a, a, a corner. Monroe end over end punt. Carter on the other end at the 22. Patrick Carter. Got about 10 on the return, so Louisville's got the ball back. 11 minutes and 25 seconds remaining in the game. Time running out on the Canes. Time is in the favor of the Cardinals. Introducing the world's smallest camera flip phone. Take up to nine pictures with one push of a button. The Pantech C300, only from Singular. Beautiful features, fashionably small. Singular, raising the bar. Spending limit? Who cares? Not us, cause them ain't all credit cards. <laughs> sure ain't. The motorcycles was expensive and fast. And loud. Oh yeah, them bikes be like, Wah! No, no, like, Oh, they went like <laughs> Sound good because they free. Shoot. Yeah, shoot. City Identity Theft Solutions. Talk to a real person to help get your life back. Free when you get a city credit card or city bank account. I've trained for this my whole life. I cannot fail. I will not fail because I am one with a can. <laughs> Dr. Pepper has given you a shot at a million dollars, but first you got to get past me. Log on to ESPN.com, keyword pepper. Beat me at college pick'em, and you could be passing for the million live at the Big 12 and ACC championship game Saturday, December 2nd on ABC. Tell 
television's hottest sensation. Dancing with the Stars, live ABC Tuesday. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC. This was a scene on the Cardinals' sideline before they took the field. Do you think Brian Brom's still not into the game? He was right in the middle of the huddle. The ice bag is off the right wrist. He's already gone to the locker room. There's his numbers today. Remember, he played two years ago when the starting quarterback was injured and did a nice job as a freshman against Miami, though they lost the game. Today, he set up the table, and now he's hoping Hunter Cantwell can clean it off. Stripling on the inside, only about a yard gain. They're playing without Brian Brown. They're playing without Michael Bush. With more on that, here's Bonnie. Had a chance to talk to Mike yesterday, Brad, in good spirits, but he told me it was really emotional for him last Saturday when he was sitting at home at his grandmother's house watching his team romp all over Temple. Now, remember, this guy has an eight-inch metal rod inserted in his leg, so he's still in a lot of pain. He's been keeping it elevated most of the time, but he's been in one of those range of motion machines two hours a day, getting physical therapy every other day. He said he's going to try to move back on campus and get back to class this week because he really wants to spend some time around the team. He was going to watch the game from the balcony outside Coach Petrino's box today. And there's the big play to Mario Urudia again. And it doesn't matter if it's Brom or Cantwell. They're going after it. The third time they connected on that play. Urudia beating Sharp in the middle of the field with no help. You know the impressive thing about that play, Bob, is that they picked up all the Miami players. Take a look at the white shirts. Nobody gets near Cantwell. Look at this. They knew who they knew who to pick up. All he had to do was step up and throw it. It's a great catch. When the, it, you know, on the other side, Miami can't get enough time to throw. At the 39-yard line, Cantwell going to swing it out to Stripling. He got a block. He got a crease. about to come into the depot. Hello, Louisville. Art Carmody in for the point after. 31 to 7, Louisville. He had a play like this last week, fellas. When he gets the corner, if he's even, He's leaving, and watch Stripling. The backup quarterback threw it to the backup running back, and the result was the same as Brom the Bush. Gil, you okay? I'm going in. Going in where? Gonna save the company. Save the company from what? The servers, they're all over. Gotta get them before they get us. Gil, we're switching to IBM servers. That's a server? It's a blade. Denser, so you can fit more into less space. Did you say blade? Gil, put the keyboard down. Take back control with a scalable IBM Blade Center featuring dual-core Intel Xeon processor. Is that your tie on your head? That's yours. Winder back in New York with this vote for the Pontiac game-changing performance of the day. BC wins in double overtime for the second straight week thanks to Jamie Silva's game-saving interception. 
To vote for your Pontiac game-changing performance, just log on to ESPN.com and type in keyword Pontiac. Nine fifty-five remaining in the ball game. George Stripling doing a little dance, and why not? Thirty-eight yard touchdown on the swing pass from Hunter Cantwell. Boy, the Cardinals are feeling it. So are their fans. If this lead holds up, and there's no indication it won't, they're going to be happy in the Highlands, and Four Street's going to be alive tonight. From the two, Andrew Johnson out across the 20, got to about the 23 yard line. If you didn't see it at the beginning of the ball game, the scene before the game, about 15 minutes before kickoff, was this. That's Paul Petrino. He's the offensive coordinator for the Cardinals. He's also the head coach's younger brother. He told us yesterday, you get very few chances in life to do something special. He said, we're not going to sit out there and paint on Saturday. We're going to go for it. They just went for it, and they lead 31-7. to They're calling the right plays at the right time, and even with the backups in there, they're executing On the sweep and out near the 30-yard line. Whitehead makes the stop on Charlie Jones. You know, the defense of Louisville's played so well today. Will Gay talked about what they're putting together here in the Ville. We're about to be a powerhouse. And I don't know if anybody believes it. I know this team believes that this organization is the city, this community. And we're about to put ourselves on the map. Remember, they were trailing 7-0. Miami had it first and goal. Could have been 14 to nothing, and maybe all the air would have gone out of this place. They hung in, and now they've got the big lead in the fourth quarter. First down run by Charlie Jones as he got it out, and a late flag flies in at the 40-yard line. Pickup of 11. Brad, you're talking to Bobby Petrino. He just said to us, you know, we need to take that step, that one more step for this program here. And he said yesterday, he said, well, you know what? It's this team here. If we beat Miami, we have made that step. They leaped over it. I mean, <laughs> this is just unbelievable what they've done to Miami today. 96, Louisville, five yards from the end of the run. First down. Zach Anderson, a face mask penalty, and it's a first down. Time permitting, remind you to stay tuned for the Thrifty Car Rental Report featuring scores and highlights with John Craig and Doug back in New York. It's going to be a long week for that man if all of this holds up in the next eight minutes and 43 seconds. Well, I think what Nate Harris, uh, the middle linebacker for Louisville, said earlier in the week was true. They're not what they once were. They're not what they used to be. And and that's not a, n a bad thing for, for uh, Coker. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's just the way it is. I mean, it's tough to keep up that legacy of winning championships and all that other stuff. Remember... Larry Coker, and I think, you know, folks have short memories, and we live in a microwave society, obviously. National champions in 01, second place in 02, number five in the country in 03. Yeah, they were 9-3 and back-to-back -back years and were not the power they once were, but I don't think it's all on that guy's shoulders. It's going to be because he's the guy that has to have the final word, and he's the head coach of a team that's about ready to get spanked on the road here today. And they are still coming after Charlie Jones. That Louisville defense has been intense all day long. Well, you know, when you have a defense like Louisville, and with no, now honestly, we came down here, none of us talked about their defense. We didn't even think about it. Hey, these guys, what are they doing? They're, they're gaining 650 yards a game. The first two games, they averaged 60 points a game. You talk about their offense and what they did. But what they have done here today defensively is astounding. Miami's only got 65 rushing yards today. Second down and 10. Again, they creep up to the line, and they bring the heat after Kyle Wright, and down he goes again. And it's Malik Jackson again. They're just sending more people than Miami can block. And the, and the, the problem with this whole thing, Bob, is that they're coming right up the middle of the field. The problem is the back goes the wrong way. He steps this way. And he should step this way because that's where the, the uh, blitz is coming from. He goes to the right. He can't even get back. He doesn't even see the linebackers blitzing. 
Back at the 50-yard line, third down and 20 for the Canes. Time running out, 6.45 to play. All Louisville right now. Kyle Wright, throw, almost intercepted by Nate Harris. And boy, would Nate have partied with that one. <laughs> oh, fourth down. You know what I'm thinking right now? That game we saw last night, West Virginia yep. at Louisville. You're reading my mind, partner. Huh? The schedule will show you Louisville's schedule shortly because they've got a big date on a Thursday night on ESPN. And a couple days later, ESPN will be here for the Breeders' Cup. It's going to be a hot time in the old town that week. Miami's taking a timeout. In it. 6.36 to play. So let's take a look at Bobby Petrino's team schedule the rest of the way out. A lot of winnable games right there if you just think about who this team is. But that number five, West Virginia, that's, that's the only, one to circle. That's the only ranked team on their schedule at this point. Rutgers is playing much better. Pittsburgh is doing well. And they admitted that they had this Miami game circled and West Virginia, I'm sure they'll start to circle later, but all summer long, they admitted, you know, we were looking ahead a little bit. We know what we had coming up the second week of September. And coming up on Thursday, November 2nd, as we talk about it, you can go from Papa John's Cardinal Stadium and go right through the twin spires of Churchill Downs because it'll be a Thursday night football game that'll be one for the ages, maybe. And the Breeders' Cup on ESPN at noon on Saturday, November 4th. So keep that in mind a little ways down the line. You know, I, 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 I can't let all this pass without throwing a, uh, a tip of the hat out to Howard Snellenberg. You got that right. Good friend of mine. When he came to this program in 1985, I said, Howard, what are you doing? <laughs> He's going to Louisville to resurrect. He was his hometown. Uh, Howard Snellenberg is from Louisville. Stayed here for 10 years. Got the program going. Said we need a... We need a football stadium. They were playing in the old baseball park. Five years after he left, now we got the stadium and everything's going good. Now John L. Smith's doing a pretty good job, and he's got a coordinator named Petrino, and John yeah. L. goes to the Big Ten. Bobby Petrino comes back from the Jacksonville Jaguars with some pretty good thoughts from Tom Coughlin. Exactly. And now they're working it. But yeah. this guy is the guy that started, and you can give him credit for both programs, yes. including Miami. He's the one that won the first championship in 1983 at the University of Miami. Then he came here and did very well over his decade stay, and they say the only time they've ever seen him speechless is when they unveiled that football complex. He didn't quite know what to say. Kyle Wright, pressure again. We've said it all day. On the run, incomplete, intended for Lance Leggett. And it's fourth down again. Brad, you know when you have a pretty good, pretty good team and a great franchise because you're gonna make the stadium bigger. And they are gonna make this baby bigger. It's not very big, but they're adding 21,500 seats and then they're gonna add more after that. They're gonna add to the far side as you pan to the right. They'll put it up on top there with more sky boxes and I think they won't have any problem selling the joint out. Six and a half to go, they got a big lead. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC. The Pontiac G6 Series offers more combinations of options and accessories than there are drivers in America. G6 sedan, coupe, or hardtop convertible. Choose a shape, then build yours at Pontiac.com. Now, introducing the GM 100,000 mile powertrain warranty, plus courtesy transportation and roadside assistance on every 2007 vehicle we make. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. Cause your friends are my friends, and my friends are your friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. Introducing the new limited edition Tony Stewart line, only by Old Spice. Where are we going for our honeymoon? A romantic island in the south. Jamaica? Uh, credit card miles are blacked out, a little more south. Antigua? Uh, blacked out further south. Aruba? Getting warmer. Isn't this great? Did you notice? No bugs. We gotta switch to Capital One. Get Capital One's new No Hassle Rewards. Now with no blackout dates, no earn caps, and no miles expiration. Hey, it's Walrus mating season. What's in your wallet?
There are some crazy blades out there, so reach for the ultimate balm. Replenishing aftershave balm with Care Protect soothes and repairs the damage from shaving. Only from Nivea for Men. In five days, whose panties are on the bulletin board? A new season and a new night. It's always one of mine, always. The season premiere of Grey's Anatomy, Thursday at 9, 8 central, only on ABC. ESPN's College Football on ABC, brought to you by Hummer, like nothing else. Aflac, ask about it at work. And Singular, raising the bar. That's a look of Tyro Moss, Greg Olson, and the Miami Hurricanes hanging their head because they're six and a half minutes away from going home. A very unhappy team. 107 straight weeks in the top 25. They came in ranked number 17th and number 12 Louisville is putting a hurting on them right now. Colby Smith. Smith got a couple. It'll bring up second down and eight. Season premiere of Gray's Anatomy Thursday night at 9, 8 Central. Make a move with TV's hottest doctors to a new season and a new night. I don't know what you're going to do, Grease. That's your favorite show. Uh, no, I they moved it from Sunday, you know. Yeah, Sunday night. I used to be there. Well, but... I suppose you're going to take a, a, an hour off from the ESPN Thursday night game when we watch together so you can go watch Grey's Anatomy. Well, I wouldn't want to leave you guys, but you know I've had that TiVo at home. It's going to be <laughs> working overtime. Going to be humming, huh? Thursday nights it's going to be humming. Cardinals at the 48-yard line. The stadium is humming. A record crowd. I'll tell you about it after this play. From the 48 of the Canes. Just trying to consume some time now. And Colby Smith keeps his hand and his head going forward. And he gets down to the 43-yard line. Don't forget Nebraska and USC coming up tonight. Colby Smith and George Stripling have done another great job filling in for the injured Michael Bush. And I know Michael's here somewhere watching the game. We wish him well with his rehab. You know, as bad as he wants to be out here, he's pretty happy for the guys that are filling in for him right now. Well, I've always said you never have a good enough good running backs. And, and as good as Michael Bush is and will be again, he's a big bruiser, different style than these two guys filling in for him. And Tom Jurich, the athletic director, has done a brilliant job here in Louisville with both the football and the basketball programs, told me the other day, we're doing everything we can to get Mike healthy for whether or not he wants to go to the National Football League and work out prior to the draft. He could try for a medical red shirt if he chose to try to come back to Louisville, but once you've had an injury that's as bad as the one he's got, you always think, well, you know, do you want to try that again? Right. Bonnie? When I, asked, when I asked Bush about it yesterday, he obviously wasn't being too committal, but what the doctors did told him is that he can start putting weight on the leg in two weeks, that he should be back to 100% in five or six months, which puts him really close to the NFL combine. That's at the end of February. Of course, he can have individual workouts for teams and whatnot. There you see the injury and the broken leg. And Mike, uh, we wish you all the best. Your team's playing pretty good without you, and they're playing pretty good without your starting quarterback. Two Heisman candidates if you will to start the season one gone for the year we don't know on Brian Brom yet he was hurt earlier in this ball game but Hunter Cantwell in his stead's done a nice job and Colby Smith keeps his footing again how bad does he want it down to the 36 yard line one thing about Michael Bush being missing on his team and when you talk to the players about it they think well we got to step it up we're going to do it a little bit more for him and, and you take a look at what they just did Colby Smith running the ball just then I mean, this is a continuous effort to pick up the first down. You know, they miss him, yes. 79 total yards between the two of them. Time permitting, stay tuned for the Thrifty Car Rental Report featuring scores and highlights. John Craig and Doug will have them back for you in New York when we're done and we're four minutes away. And a very quick-paced game here in Louisville. On the ground, Colby Smith. And he gets down near the 30-yard line. We talked about impact players today and whether or not some of these guys would come to shine. Nate Harris, he talked about a good game, and he played a good game today. Mario Urudia, you think he had a pretty good game? 56-yard touchdown was one of the key plays in the ball game that turned it in Louisville's favor. You know, when you look at this game, and let's go all the way back to the first quarter, 
Miami's punting the ball. They're punting the ball away. They get a roughing the putter penalty. Then they ended up getting seven points. That's the only points that they put on that board, and they have not even threatened since then. That's right. At the 30, second down, Stripling back in there at the tailback spot. And George, who's got a touchdown, gets the call to the 30-yard line. Did this game break down like we thought it would? Well, like I said, Louisville, they're looking for some big plays. They had seven big plays of 20 yards or more. And Miami has, the defense has to step up. They stopped the run, but they didn't stop the pass. How many, how many did Olsen catch? Three? <laughs> Yep. <laughs> well, no, first no. of all, the quarterback had no time to throw the ball to anybody, so it didn't make any yeah. difference who was going to receive the end of it. And I, I, I really think that Louisville was able to run the ball efficiently. Third down, down to 220 remaining in the ball game. And they won't get it. He swarmed under for a loss. Let's take a look at the Pacific Life game summary. The summary is Louisville's putting it on, number 17, Miami. They did it with this 56-yard touchdown strike. Demario Urudia from Brian Brom before Brian got hurt on this play. We don't know how bad, but Hunter Cantwell came in. He throws the swing pass out to George Stripling, and George says, I'll see all of you later because I'm faster than all of you. 39-yard touchdown. That's kind of the capper of how it went today. And we hope for Louisville that Brian Brown's going to be okay and be back in action. Right now they've got a fourth down as they hustle up to the line using as much time as possible and they run the play clock down to zero. Let's check in with Bonnie. Here's the update. As we know it, Dwayne Triolo, Louisville's trainer, told me that Brian Brom's wrist injury, thumb injury, is worse than expected. He has a torn ligament in his wrist. They're leaning towards surgery tomorrow. Best case scenario, Brad, they could have him back in five weeks, which is after the West Virginia game. Oh, boy, that is terrible. Oh, it's a tough break. Yeah. I'm... To lose two superstars and coach coach up the, back, the backups as well as uh, Bobby Petrino and his staff have done, and now... Boy, on the front of their media guide, it's like being on Sports Illustrated. It's yeah. Brian Brown, it's Michael Bush, and it's yeah. talking about two Heisman Trophy guys. Oh, boy. And they're both gone. That's too bad. That really is. So, a delay a game. It's fourth down and 11. That is the only thing that's going to sour how impressive a victory and what a major milestone victory this is going to be for Louisville today. And that is the injury to their star quarterback. But... 42,704, a record crowd came to watch it, and they're on their feet right now. You couldn't get a ticket for this game. They named this town after Louis the Sixth. If he was alive, he wouldn't be able to get in here. <laughs> Lewis and Clark paddled their canoe down till they hit land. They couldn't get in here. Everybody else gonna go home happy. <laughs> well, we need to add on to the stadium. <laughs> Getting in all those things he's read and studied. I do enjoy drinking Guinness at a tailgating party. Yes, and I've discovered that the local custom is to wear cheese on your head. So, to fit in, I brought along some hunks of Limburger. Limburger cheese heads? Brilliant! <laughs> I'm not so sure we're fitting in. I smell feet. Whatever the occasion, drink responsibly. Brilliant! Pontiac G6 Series offers more combinations of options and accessories than there are drivers in America. G6 Sedan, Coupe, or Hardtop Convertible. G6 
Choose a shape, then build yours at Pontiac.com. Now, introducing the GM 100,000-mile powertrain warranty, plus courtesy transportation and roadside assistance on every 2007 vehicle we make. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC. Well, the other times that Miami was considered a big underdog, the last five times they've won them all, four of them were on the road. They're not going to win this one today. They trail with a minute 15 remaining in the ball game. And now it's just time to get some yards that you can and get to the airport and go back to Coral Gables and start all over because they're going to be one and two yeah. for the first time in a long time. Well, they've lost three of their last four now, and uh, you know, Larry Coker puts integrity in front of wins. You know, he suspends guys that don't go to the, to the classes. They're not doing good in grades. He doesn't. He, he suspends them from playing in the games. Other coaches want to keep their players playing, and they get them up, and they'll run them. Down. He doesn't do that. He suspends them from the games. He does the right things. This is a small, private university, 15,000 people, and Larry Coker is doing what's right. This is definitely a low point for the University of Miami. They have a bye next week. They have four games in the future that they should win. This program will be back, but it's going to take a little bit of time, but by the end of the year, They'll be back rolling. And we're also going to see how, how good Louisville really is. Because you just you touched on it a moment ago, Brad. You lose two superstars in your offense that is the power of this football team. They found out today that they've got a pretty good defense on top of it. Yep. But you lose those guys. And I all right, their schedule isn't all that tough. But the thing about it is how good can they how well can they stay together? They can't afford to lose any more people. Final 25 seconds, a signature game and a signature win for Louisville, and they're still bringing the heat on the Miami quarterback, and he's still feeling the heat. Kyle trying to get away from everybody and throws to Javaris James. James down into the secondary to about the 30-yard line, but it really doesn't matter. Pickup of 25. So number 17, Miami, getting clobbered here by number 12, Louisville. Bobby Petrino with a new long-term contract. He says, my family and I know that this is home. I want to build this into a powerhouse. He might have one in the making right now. The train just pulled into the depot in Louisville. What a game. What a win, and what a way to put your program on the map. Today's Chevrolet players of the game. We could have picked a lot of them with the guys in the red jerseys. Kenny Phillips, seven tackles for Miami. Yerudia, Mario, four receptions, 96 yards, and a touchdown. In recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. With a backup quarterback and a defense that just wouldn't quit. The Louisville Cardinals win it going away. 31 to 7 is the final. That's going to do it for us. Thanks for being along today. For Bob Greasy, Paul McGuire, Bonnie Bernstein, I'm Brad Nessler. This is quite a win for Louisville and Bobby Petrino. Let's head to New York. Here's John Craig and Doug. The other.